good evening and welcome so no one was warning me that the time was up or there was the two minute warning was uh, was here so i kind of missed it there we go now i'm tucked in all right good evening um welcome back to dyson sphere it's been a while hasn't it i feel yeah it's been a week i guess hasn't it been a week i think so um i made a youtube video yeah which in the means that now the youtube is kind of ahead of uh, of our twitch schedule which is not really a problem because as soon as we log in they're all up to date and i've been thinking this was why i was getting a little bit delayed on what to do now and i got an idea i want to make take a star system with the take the star system with the highest uh, luminosity in my galaxy and then take that and make 10 spheres in the biggest radius you can with it's not going to be the densest uh, that we can but it's going to be pretty dense so basically have like i want to make some kind of mega project that we can just sort of like oh there we go now that's uh, going to chuck along for a long time then um uh, while we sort of figure out if if there's other other things you want to do and that would be like a giant Dyson sphere that produces a lot of power. That could, that could be like interesting to do if if that's possible. Uh, Want to stress test your new computer? Yeah, I mean why not? It's already stressed out because of of everything. But um, I think we'll have to kill the dark fog swarm, uh, the the farm because I think that's taking probably half of the all updates. I don't know, probably not. But it's it's kind of excessive at this point. Um, it's it's a waste. And then maybe restart it again when, uh, when possible. But I don't know how that how that would work. But we'll we'll find out. Um, yeah. So that's the uh, that's one of the plans. Also, we are going to enable this thirty science per second, so we can really just crank up the uh, the research and just uh, basically going to be chasing bottlenecks as uh, as everything just runs out when we start farming that amount of, uh, of resources. So we know that quantum chips and all the subsequent things going into quantum chips will be uh, be strained, but hey, it's fun. Um, and basically just um, just kind of settling into the end game and then figure out how long we want to keep playing this. So that really might very much depends on if there is any interest for us continuing this series. Um, I like it and I like the sort of the, the late game of it. Uh, just there's always something to do and there's like tinkering and you need start new projects so that would be a, a cool idea now other things um i want to play sekiro i i gotta be honest i'm really enjoying that game um and i just so i'm sekiro and then i'm doing my kinbaku then then that's sort of more japanese traditional things and then <gasps> I found a new, absolutely ridiculously amazing show. I was I I was sitting there watching it by myself, and I several times like, holy shit, this is good! Holy shit, this is good! Like I was thinking, is it? It is. It is first season Game of Thrones. It is watching Deadwood for the first time. Good. It's that kind of good. So did I did I pique your interest at this point? It is absolutely ridiculous. The level of detail the uh, uh scenography the, the the scope and scale of things and it's it's of course there's a lot of cgi but it's done in a way that is like oh yeah of course we're not going to build an entire city but here it is in the background it doesn't look awesome and it's looking realistic like instead of instead of just going like ooh cgi is cheap let's make everything stupidly gigantic Silver Cecil, exactly. Shogun, it exactly. Oh my God, you were. Minds are aligned. It is Shogun. Holy shit, that's good. And you know, the Japanese people speak. Wait for it. Japanese. It's so good. Now, the fact that all Europeans speak English instead of Portuguese, I'm fine with that. I can, I can accept that. But Japanese should be Japanese. And... Like the way they do it through translators is absolutely amazing because then it becomes part of the of the plot and the, the plot is advanced and complicated 
and political. It's it's the kind of stuff like um, yeah, it, Game of Thrones for season one is it's kind of like the, the houses and their intrigue and the positioning for power between them, all of these things, and then the small. Uh, pawns that are moved around and how that sort of fits into the larger scheme it is absolutely ridiculous so uh but never read the source but i will have to watch it soon uh, i would so recommend it i i sat down and watched one episode and i know i'd like oh back to work and like but i could watch one more and it's of course it's also because just playing Sekiro, it's even more attuned because it is it is Literally the same, uh, same era. Uh, it's on Disney Plus, which is ridiculous because there are there are naked breasts in it. <gasps> I didn't th didn't think that Disney Plus could do that. Oh my god, yeah, FX. It, but for me, it's on Disney Plus. It's made by FX, but isn't FX more of a yeah shogun, as Sybil Cecil is saying uh, up above? Yeah, okay. Well, that's probably different. But in in my neck of the woods, it is on. Uh, uh, on Disney Plus, and uh, wow, 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 wow! Yeah, all the streamers have basically become one, and then they add commercials in between. And hold on, did they have, did streaming services just become cable TV? Oh yeah, they did. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, but yeah, I, I was, I was, I'm blown away by how good that is. It is so good. I, I can't even sort of. Um, I can't even find what I I could compare. I think Game of Thrones season one, but because but this, the the memory of how good season one of Game of Thrones was is tainted by how awful season eight was. So so you kind of think like no no it, it was associated. It is by proximity it's bad, but it it actually wasn't bad by proximity. It was really fucking good. Um, and Deadwood as well is it has the same thing. That's a very high bar, and I I am serious about it. It. Like there was, there's one scene where I go like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> where, not spoiling anything, one of the lords is, he's been, he's been looking out and then he turns around and then there are just rows of soldiers who just move to the side with torches. And there are maybe like 50 soldiers standing there with torches, move to the side and you see this shot for all of two seconds, moving on to something else. Like, the insanity they've gone through on on sort of for the setups for the uh, like the amount of people involved it's so good and there's not a lot of, of sword don't expect like uh sword fighting deadwood good absolutely exactly deadwood good um and in the same way that deadwood is about is a western you don't see a lot of gunplay considering it's a western Considering uh, if, if from <laughs> from the yeah the, uh, the 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 more common interpretation of westerns, if it's better because it's based on a novel, and there's a whole story, yeah, I think so too. Um, I think it's because I think that when there's a good source material, then you have the depth. If you write stuff directly for TV, then I think that things become catered too much to the medium of TV. And then they'll be cutting some corners and there'll be sort of, uh, yeah. And, and you also have this part, if if you're making it for TV, then you go like, well, let's make sure we have diverse representation and let's make sure that we have a strong female lead. But this is a novel that was written at a time by someone and that that's that's the way it is. Like it takes courage these days to, to make things that are not particularly representative. Uh, and that's like Lord of the Rings, not particularly uh, representative of, uh, well, of maybe England a hundred years ago, but that's about it. Um, but that's that's the thing. If you write something for the modern audience, then I'll be like, oh, there should also be a merch opportunity. Let's uh, throw in a little uh, green gnome that we can sell merch for. And I'm going, yeah. And then suddenly it becomes the studio uh, XX and not sort of the creative talent that runs the show. Whew. All right, welcome, new small cat. Ah, right there. I've been watching your Let's Play tutorial series for two years ago on Dyson Chipper. It still holds up pretty well, despite the change made. I'm learning much more from you 
Not ever would happen on my own. Thank you for helping me figure out how to do things in this awesome game. Thank you. That's really awesome. I appreciate it. And uh, that's also the point is that uh, it's more of it's it's infotainment, right? It's uh, it's 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 not just it is supposed to be showing something than t uh, teaching something as well. My YouTube videos. Um, yeah, I have been. I have been ridiculously unpro I'm moving topic here. Um, I've been ridiculously unproductive this week. Hey, Desarius, thank you for the two months. Welcome back. Um, and the reason why I've been unproductive, I have been so unproductive that I have been productive on the th on my uh, procrastinated tasks. That's how bad it's become. I am at the point where I have answered all my emails. I have paid all my bills, even the stupid, uh, a speeding ticket I got, which is ridiculous, but that's beside the point. Um, and like I've taken care of everything. I've done. I waiting for the taxes to be reportable. So now that's on the eleventh. So in five days I can re even report my taxes. I paid my value added tax. Uh, so I've done everything. Why? Because I have an idea for a new YouTube video I want to make, or several, and and I just can't sit my ass down and get that shit done. So I end up doing everything else. And it sucks. So it's one of those things where I really want to do it, but I also know that I have to be in the right mood. And if I'm not in the right mood, then I'm like, I'll, I'll just do this first. And I'll go like, oh, well, well now there's now there's only one hour until I stream. So I, I can't make that. I can, I can, well, Oh, I think there's some laundry done. I'll just do that. And then, ah, well, well now there's half an hour on. I, I can't, I can't do it now. You know that kind of thing, right? So that's a, uh, that's why I've been super unproductive in terms of sort of uh, forward momentum. But in, on the other hand, I've also been, I don't think I have anything on my guilty conscience anymore, except for the big thing. <laughs> when you have an idea, sometimes I put it off because the idea might quickly prove bad once I try it out. Eh, ooh, that, that's not something you'd want to put in a motivational poster, is it? <laughs> I, I am at the, I am at the place, ridiculously enough, where every new YouTuber is. That part, before you become a YouTuber, but you have all intentions about doing it. And you are sort of, you're, you're, hmm. I'm I'm getting this uh, analogy of uh, of like in a swimming pool, like these towers. You're standing there on the tower, looking ten meters down, and go like, ah, I know I need to take the jump. There's only one way down. I I I, I need to take the jump, and you're just standing there, and you just kept standing there, and uh, you're on the precipice. That's the way you are. You are on the precipice, and ah, uh, uh, you want to take that jump. And I know that you hear it so much from people who want to be YouTubers, like, oh, I just need a new, um, I don't know, camera or microphone, or uh, I just need to something, or this is a really good script and I don't want to waste it on my first video, so I have to find something else, or, you know, all these kind of things. And it, it's ironic that I'm there, but I am uh, for that for that matter here. So, yeah. But just want to let you know, I'm working in the OR area of my hospital take your time the content and you know oh uh thank you small cat i think if you're working in the or it's 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 pretty reasonable to get back to work but thank you for dropping by appreciate it so <laughs> yeah yeah so do you, do you guys have that feeling of of just you know you need to get started on this it can also be like you're sick and tired of your current job and you really know that you should be changing your job. But that leap is, you know, once you've done it, you'll look back and go like, ah, oh, I should have done it for a long time ago. It wasn't that difficult. But before it looks, it looks daunting and it looks uh, insurmountable even. And, and it's so easy to come up with, with excuses of why not to do it. Yeah. So what's, what's the trick? And I know the easy one is just fucking do it. And I know that it it's it's uh there's no point in waiting for motivation to strike. There's just about the only answer is just sit down, do something. It's not gonna be as good as you want it, but it'll be out there. 
and then you can feel afterwards like did it feel right is does it feel right that it's out there now that you've now taken the leap and yeah luckily it's easy to say why don't you just uh hard to do it it is but it's also like I think often we are our own worst enemies by by setting the bar unreasonably high for us to start new projects or something else, right? Like you want to get started on something and you set the bar really high. Like for example, if you want to exercise more, then you have a vision of yourself in perfect shape. Well, like well, that's not really that's not really what's going to happen, right? It's it's maybe it's it's uh, getting started with the motivation or a, a bar that's a lot lower because if you set the bar so high there is so much room to fail because you haven't achieved it so setting smaller targets that's kind of how i would break it down instead of saying like oh i wanted to be at that place on the other side then if the if you only value the target then the journey is going to be a pain in the ass so you have to enjoy the journey and how do you do that? Then set some small targets, some small goals, get started on it. Um, I did I did give it advice to a friend of mine who wanted to start her own company. She is, is as a as a therapist and also as a masseur. And then and then she was after we we known each other for half a year and she kept talking about her website. Like she needed to get a website. And then I said, Here's how I've been running my business. Every day, you do something to move your business forward. It doesn't have to be much, but you just have to do something. And even if it's a little thing, because over time, you will look back and realize how much ground you covered. And I thought that was really sound advice. And half a year later, when she has established her business, she actually came back and said, like, I really took that to heart. And it was so much easier because I just told myself to do a little thing every day. And when I did that, I didn't have bad, uh, bad conscience. And now I'm looking back and it's half a year of just doing a little thing and I have a website and I have my location. I have my, this, I have my first clients. I'm like, fucking hell, that was awesome. So now I just have to take my own advice, which is obviously the hardest because you kind of know it all. You can't do, these are not the droids you're looking for. It doesn't work on yourself, but you can do it on, on other people. Yeah. So, uh, so trying to, to, to find motivation in the journey and uh, and and bring do a little step every day on that on that journey um then I think that's the that's the stuff that um and of course it's easy to get distracted because oh I just had something else it, whether that is exercise more or start looking for a new job or something like that it could be anything. Uh, or fixing your relationship or you know it could be anything that you uh, any any project that you uh, that you're undertaking just just do a little thing every day and then uh, then after a couple of months looking back it'll it'll be quite a quite a lot of progress you made i i also think like the fact that i got started on youtube like the brilliant thing about getting started on youtube is both the best and the worst thing is no one's going to watch it there we go that's the best and worst thing. So you can feel your voice is terrible. You have a horrible accent and you look like shit and you don't want to put yourself out there and all that stuff. Um, don't worry, no one's going to watch it. <laughs> so that's really not going to be a problem. So it, you can put it out there and then that's it. Rarely do people make one video and then it becomes an amazing hit uh, just just out of the blue. Um, so, so just, Make a video, enjoy the fact that now you've done through done the process. If you enjoy the process, despite it not having any views, then uh, good uh, good for you. Then you can start improving and getting something else done. Yeah, so ah, that's uh, that's kind of my spiel. Little disappointed no one's coming up with something that they're working on or uh, anyone having a similar similar experience. Um, it is. Be perfectly honest it's a lot harder to do these kind of rants when i look in chat and there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing nothing coming back and i don't take forces in it's just that it's um it feels like oh am i still on online 
when we do have and you'll spend your whole life chasing that one high that you'll never reach again yeah well luckily i've not experienced that phoenix so that's uh that's good sometimes you see one of a video and you go like oh that's cool you click the video and go that was awesome and then you look at the channel to see what else they made and go like oh shit they have no views on other content and then this one thing has a million views it just really got hit something and they will just be looking at that video and go like how the hell did that one do so well and the one that was before or after which is basically the same just didn't if only client deadlines work with a little bit every day oh it does it does i mean it's this is about improving things this is not about doing your daily job like you do your daily job but if you want to sort of say i want to build up competencies then that's the stuff that you can do a little bit every day oh here's some new challenge well let me actually spend a little bit of the time on on actually learning this and not just fixing it and pushing it onwards or you know those kind of things or like okay i could pass it on to someone else or i could do it myself and then i'll learn something new and you know those are the kind of things that yeah <laughs> don't know what the main point but that's great conrad <laughs> writing my doctoral thesis hardest shit i've ever done a little bit of it definitely good advice yes that is uh i think especially for something like a, a thesis now i haven't written a doctoral thesis but i've written two master theses i don't know it doesn't doesn't compare but it's uh it's still half a year's of work that uh, has to be condensed into one deliverable or one consolidated deliverable and and that was also that was actually one of the things that um like if I had, if I went to the office, I did something every day, then I was making progress. And then suddenly it was like, oh shit, it's actually, it's actually coming together really nice. And now there's a couple of months left and then I need to sort of box it in a little bit more. And then of course with the doctoral, then uh, things are a little bit bigger. But I think that getting to the office and doing something every day uh, that sort of moves towards the goal is a, uh, this is very valuable even even more so when it's it's a long term like the bigger and longer term the goal is the more important i think it is to break it down into i'm not going to advocate like breaking it down into sub components like oh this week i must do something because then you just set yourself up for many ways of failing um but you'll you will you can break it down and then start working on something because oh, with the doctoral or anything like that you can't upfront determine how much time each thing takes that might be something that you thought would be easy and it's hard or it might be something you set aside a lot of time and then turns out it's a dead end and you don't need to spend time on it yeah i'll tell you this i spent too long in my last job because i kept putting off looking for a way to go back to school and be out of the workforce when i finally did it was 1000 i should have done it sooner yes uh let me latch onto that should have done it sooner where i usually encounter it is with people breaking up like long-term relationship getting divorced for example the flip side of i should have done it sooner but when you have the feeling of i should have done it sooner there is no regret there is no regret about oh should i have given it an extra chance because you certainly gave it an extra chance while sometimes the people who jump ship at the first opportunity they will then sort of, oh shit, did I do the right thing? And get this, uh, I don't know, buyer's remorse. And then uh, think, oh shit, oh shit, did I, did I give my ex the fair chance? And maybe if we found, if we came, got back together. And then and that's just three years of shitty on and off relationship because it didn't work and you did give it enough time. But you didn't, you didn't get to the point where you said I should have left three years earlier, which I think is the, it's healthier somehow because then you know that there is no going back and you are done with that whether that's a job or a, a relationship then you are done if you feel like i should have done it sooner so think of it the positive side is that you have no uh you are not sort of left in a in a position where you think oh is it the right choice because once you take the leap yeah there's no no doubt about it right same rights can be applied to many things in life. Ah, absolutely. If you want to be a better person, you have to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. How you can be a little bit better. It's the beauty of baby steps. 
Yeah, I don't know how you could become a better person. Like, it's a... Shaking hands and kissing hands... Shaking, shaking babies and kissing hands or... I don't know the whole better person. But yeah, be more true to yourself and whatever better person means for... Um, Read an elephant one bad one mouth one one bad at a time. Yeah, um, yeah, it it is true, and and don't expect like radical changes. Sometimes radical changes happen. Uh, something happens that sort of makes you question all your reality, but most of the time, change is gradual, and then you'll look back a year ago or a month, not a month, but a year ago, and you go like, oh shit, I was in a completely different place a year ago, and. If you have good friends who are with you on that journey, they will also be the ones who go like, I can really feel that change in your attitude or posture or position or health or whatever and uh, and encourage you on that journey. That's really nice. Uh, regarding to the main thread, I finally know when I'll be out of work so I can start looking for a new job. Frank. Our last Dyson Sphere chat, uh, a fishy got, fishy, <laughs> fishy, <laughs> got to preparing the two set of ropes. Ah, I finally, oh, fishy, I guess that's finally, <laughs> got to preparing the two set of ropes. I've been laying around for years. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Ooh, I did. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go into it. I had like amazing experience. I had a, a, a rope date yesterday and for me, that is someone, it's a model who has really experienced, been doing it for 10 years. And the fact that I gave her a really good experience and I could see that, holy shit, I do really advanced stuff and I do it not casually, but smoothly. I was like, damn, that felt, it felt really good for me. It felt like a, a graduation of just like, I could do some of the most advanced stuff that you could do. And I could do it with someone who was really experienced and she was impressed by both the connection and the technique. I was like, oh shit, you've only been doing this for half a year. I was like, yeah, but I've been doing it a lot for half a year. So that's um, that was just a really good. And it's so taking it away from that, from, from that uh, discussion, but that's also one thing where you just do a little step every day and practice a little bit uh, and make sure that every, uh, every interaction is also an opportunity for learning. And there we go. So. So, Fennec, you're looking for a new job. Sounds interesting. Let us know how that uh, progresses. So, cool. We are in the game with our two subs for today. So, this kind of pattern, I except not this one. This is weird because it has triangles somewhere. Uh, maybe not this one, but one of the other previews had triangles. But I'd want to have something like this with small hexagons and then the occasional uh, pentagon. There. Abo, thank you for the 27 months. Wait, you play games? Welcome Sometimes I do. Have them in the background. Oh, what is this? Oh, uh, that's probably not the right save then. Let's take that one. Yeah, let's try that. Oh yeah, that was another save that because I wanted it for the screenshot to have it with... Uh, with with the uh, uh, ghost builds. Here. Cool. So this is our 37.5 white signs per second uh, build and it's working. It's going to be really interesting to see when and where it breaks. And so the way it works is 30 white, uh, blue, 30 red, yellow which i misplaced that one so i thought it was actually inside a block but it wasn't uh then 10 plus 10 plus 10 purple science and 10 plus 10 plus 10 uh, green science then the 30 um antimatter and goes in and then it begins pretty it goes in here gets proliferated and becomes out as 37.5 white science which then gets processed which get proliferated and then processed so thank you bison why why isn't power thank you just passing by to drop my prime thank you appreciate it for seven months um i don't want to double this because i think that's too much but what i do want is i want to enable 
this build because I have uh, disabled something there and that means we are going to see a ridiculous uh, oops yeah hello Grantio good evening we just left your planet one of your planets uh, I noticed that you missed the meridian on the YouTube video by a block or two you missed the meridian Don't know. Card, thank you for the former. Uh, six months. Let's go street streaking. Really? <laughs> for the side build, I wanted to upgrade from initial 5 per second. I just wanted 10 per second purple and green and 30 of those. Well, there we go. That was exactly what we did. There. Oh, now there's another thing that's also broken. I think this one's just broken because I disabled the import here. That one. So when that comes in, should be good. Why is there a remote? Whoa, look at that. Remote demand for grading crystal is not there. What? How are we not... Okay. That's that that's crazy. Now long wait for the 4K modern smelter. Um this is another problem. Okay, so this is actually uh, a grading grading problem. Grading crystals are dead. Damn. Hmm. Okay, well that uh kind of settles it we need to find the bestest planet ooh, ooh luminosity 2.5 that's the one that's the one 2.467 that it can't go much higher than that this is going to be our next our build pin how many planets does it have oh crap it doesn't only has one that's not good enough oh that sucks we can't build on one because we need multiple launchers. Oh, that sucks. Hmm. Do we really not? Is that the only big blue we have here? Yeah, look at that, the Venosity. It's only the big ones. It's the O-types, right? This is a blue giant. Spectral class O. Oh no, this is also an O-type, which can have a little bit less. That's also an O-type. 2.1. Hmm. B-type. That's an O-type. Oh, this is good. Please, oh my god, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Now we are running out of uh, of um, uh, our patrons. Let me see if there are any anyone remaining here that we haven't done because we can only have it for an extra payment on last class let's see well i think this one is uh, going to be called oops that was not what i want there correlated and that goes into our sheet. Paste values only. There we go. And from the waiting list, we get and insert above. So my plan now is we will allow the base to run, fix bottlenecks as they appear. They will. Um, Tekivaro, Mark the Youngest, Swimmer, Bathak. 
do we have how many do we have here whoops One, two, three, four, five, six. And and no gas giants? No? Six? Woo! Nice. Yeah, and then I can clean out this part. One, two, three, four. Four, five. We're actually almost done with all the, um, yeah, all of the, what's it called? All the, all the lists that we accrued over the years, which is also kind of the end point of this series then. Uh, let's have a look at that location again. Uh, there. And where is it? Did I forget to... I forgot to click it. Ugh, but to, to, to take it. Where is it? That one. No. Oh, they're correlated. There. Let's uh, get the names right. So that that's uh, already done. So. Take a borrow. Isn't that amazing we see these are then the last hype trains, and uh, let's be honest, there won't be any more. There. Swimmer. And you can also see that these names are different from... These are regular names. Um, like these ones. Take a borrow, Mark, Swimmer, Bathic, Regulars, from... Uh, been around for a long time and sort of gotten in the last hype train and then we are now getting the uh, uh, Mingsley is a coming from a um, a new Templar of the path so that's being added here cool yep six planets and wow this is just brilliant this is exactly what I'm, oh uh, I think I want to go here and just uh, stop working on that part all right, so we need to. I, I went out there for one reason was to see if it actually had grading crystals. It does have oh, 10 million. This is perfect. This is perfect with more perfect on top of it. Amazing. This is exactly what we, we wanted this for no other reason than that one. But hey, this is awesome. Cool. But. Um, Let's go uh, bop these. That's an absolutely perfect location. That is so good. So what do I think I want to do? Hmm. Um. Do I do I kill? Like I need to starve them, in a way. Uh, and we're now also seeing here. Oh, that's actually at this location. Hmm. Yeah, I need to kill this. Uh, um, should I? If I kill the relay stations. Will they respawn? No. But it's really good to just... If I kill the relay station, will a new relay station come in? Or should I... There's only one hive? How the hell are they attacking so much with only one hive? Huh. You know what? If this fails and we are not coming back with this, then so be it. I think we um, we take out the relay stations and then they might be coming back later on. Hello. Goodbye. That should prevent them from 
from attacking so much. Good. They'll, they'll obviously be really angry right now, but later on it's not. They should be uh, stopping. Okay. And now I think the time is go to our... Where is that? Oh, it's really far away. That is ridiculously far away, even. Uh, let me see if I have the stuff that I... Oh, I do not have the stuff I need. So I need to do a little pit stop to get this stuff here. That is on... Oops. Ah, come on. You're on. And here. This sphere is correct. Or is done. Yeah. Everything is completely done. So this one doesn't need anything. But that means it's probably... Oh, it is already supplied. Cool. Uh, that's fine. Let's get some... That's a problem. A lot of that. Might as well take these things. Take this in here. Hmm. It's really an excess. I need a. I, I need this part. What else? Belts? Do we have belts? Let's get some more belts. There must also be some belts here already. So we don't need to send more in here. Anything else? I, I don't like the fact that we now have a lot of incorrect things here. Finally, chat not been working for ages. Thought it was wasn't a chat ban. No, no, you 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 said uh, you said something when you came in just the morning. Um, right in the morning <laughs> at the start of the stream. Ah, you got it. There we go. Hmm. Okay, so there are three, but these are small hives, right? There's a, is there one inside or what? That is really small. This one we might as well just go up and see if that's... It's building up to be a little bit of a threat. Oh, research completed. Oh, where was the... I'm missing the sound. And speed up. Yeah, this one is just a nice little size that it just needs to be bobbed and then move out. shooting a few rockets not that it really matters much and then we oh uh we get you out to be just defaulted so that they don't attack and then i go to my correlated location there off we go and that is 22 light years away wow that's a journey Looks like his yellow power died. No, it didn't die. It's overfull. It's overflowing. That's the opposite. This means that my uh, buffers are full. And it's a little unfortunate, but hopefully there's a constant consumption of it. And if nothing else, we'll be requesting 12,000 to this planet anyway, to these six planets. So 
There is that. Ahoy to the patrons. Hey, Index R8. Yes, indeed. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. And uh, basically, the, the biggest impact the patrons have on the channel, it's a long way up, is that it allows me to play games that are unpopular. <laughs> which kind of... Ah, oh, right. Quantum chips are dead. Uh, which is super amazing that, um, that I can do that because... It's kind of also like the regulars, the ones who are patron supporters, they might enjoy me playing some other games. And that's kind of allowed to do that because of the patron support, which I think is just the, uh, kind of a perfect thing. It's not like you as a patron supporter, you can go like, hey, I played this much, now play RimWorld. But it's more like you can give me flexibility to not only play Factorio and Dyson Sphere and then now start with playing Satisfactory because those are the ones that get the views. Uh, like. Oh, uh, I think we actually have to take out some hives first. Uh, do we take out hives first? No, we don't. Because they're going to respawn. I think we need to just take out the planets first. Yes. Take Avaro is the closer one. I think. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the, the best part of... Uh, of... of that support from Patreon is that I can sometimes just say like, fuck it, I'm going to play Sekiro. It's a four-year-old game that is completely out of sync with what we don't normally play here. But I enjoy it, so that's the one we're going to play. And especially times like this, uh, where things are just not really working. Um, okay, what am I doing? That one and that one. All right, cool. Uh, do we have? Yeah, we do have support. Let's slide out here. Boop. All right, and then switch to ground. Online. Um, we don't want to attack just yet. Oh, actually. Let's do it in a different way. That's a little bit weird. What if we just uh, kill all the relay stations for all of the the stars here? Or the tenets? Kill all the relay stations. That'll sort of put them a little bit under pressure. And then also just provoke attacks. Um, that one and that one. No, that one. Yeah. Where are you? Welcome home. Welcome home, Gareth. Thank you for the sixty months. Hmm. I have an acute lack of of this. Uh, enable, enable, and there. There we go. Then they respawn here. There. That should take out everything on this one. And then we go to planet number three, Swimmer. Let's get out of the gravity well. The dark frogs, yes, dark frogs. And then again, disable, enable, and deploy. Good. That was number three. Last thing, number four. Why are we so slow? Woo! And there. Enable, disable, enable, and deploy. And Peter Chia, thank you for the tier 3 for 62 months. Absolutely amazing. Uh, by the way, I don't know why there's no achievement for this. I managed to get killed while in warp. Oh, yeah. Uh, warping through it. <laughs> why there's no achievement for it. I'm sure you did it for the achievement, of course. I mean, not because anything else would be embarrassing. So it was, of course, because you were fishing for a hidden achievement. Yes. That's our story. 
Yeah, warping through hive have done that. They uh, apparently lasers are faster than warp speed. What do you know? Click, click, click. And the last one, and then we go back to the first because that was now ready to uh, to be taken out with uh, ground forces. I don't know where those. Um... And Torconner, thank you for the 33 months. Wow, look at all these uh, subscriptions in a row here. Three. <laughs> Yay. Three. And that one. And there's not much here. And go back to oops, the inner one. So now we've kind of shock and awe against this. And Silver Cecil, thank you for the 200 bits. So cool that you could guess that it was Shogun I was uh, I was thinking of. Not enough warpers. Well, a kind I think we still have a few here. We still would self-replenish. They're two on top of each other. Ah! Uh. Oh, hello! What the hell? Oh, they were waiting for us. Ah, an ambush. Let's just land here. Boom. And that is deployed and keeping that line and here. Now these should be now Yeah, derelict because there's no more power in there. Oh. Why don't you upgrade your cruise speed? Because I'm upgrading a million other things. Because there's other things I feel is more important than cruise speed. Oh, so that was so close. Uh, so close. Silver Cecil for trying to get that hype train off the ground, but alas, did not work. Not this time either. But then again, if if the hype train won't start, then it probably won't get going if it did start. So that's how it is. Yeah, it's very, very easy to take this out when they don't have any power because then they can't make, because they get stuck at assembling. I was looking f at that super cool uh, you just made. Too bad it uses fog buildings. At standard settings, it'll take forever to farm till I get enough materials. Oh, right. Well, I don't actually think so. I mean, I I think that you you can still find places that have a lot of stuff. Um, like you don't need thirty of those. I'm I'm. I'm already I'm overfilling here on, on these things and it's unipolar magnets that's the main one that you are gonna run out of um, I did build one without the fog materials that's just uh, from my previous design so this was sort of let's let's use the best materials because they are available it would be silly not to use the best materials if now that we have them in, in the setup but it is true, like 4,000 smelters or something would be, or I don't know how much it is. I don't even know how much it takes, but it'll probably be something. When I expand to a new system, at most plants have four. Yeah, but then uh, you need to look at the neutron star and your, um, and the uh, black hole. They'll probably have more. It's a bit crowded here.
This is indeed very, very easy. I know, I know, fog bases, yes, but they are, you're, um, in, not Unipolar Magnets, but the fog bases, there were also more fog bases on your, uh, your black hole base. So check out, I think that on a standard um, standard build, it will have three three hives there, and then since there's only one planet, it could still be upwards of thirty um, planetary bases. But even if there's even if there's ten, you can easily set up a good farm that will get you what you need. My my farm is not actually as aggressive as it can be. You can set it up way more aggressive by just having them at that distance where they instantly aggro. I wanted them to come in in waves um, and then sort of be idle and then a wave and then idle but you can also just have them come in as a steady stream. I have no idea how many left but not as many as there were when we started, is my hypothesis. And just park over it and then they'll take care of the rest, that's nice. I guess we start working on this one now. Next. Should have built these immediately, but... There's a location that hasn't been tapped yet. There's still one, two, three, I think, that are... Still, you can see something over the horizon. to all of them again. Ah, that didn't get built. I think I ran away from it too fast. Just need to see the drone fly out first. There we go. Look at that! A hidden civilization.
Okay, and now we go to this location. Oh, and uh, I need to. Ah, uh, just played, just played Factorio, and then the command, the command for jumping or getting in and out of the air. I was just pressing J now, and I'm like, no, I'm just learning one, and then I get back to the other game to have to unlearn. I also, for for fun, just played a little bit of Elden Ring, and I had to stop playing Elden Ring because I got worse at playing Sekiro. I could see that. We saw that when the first time we played Sekiro that I just couldn't heal because I was on um, on on the Elden Ring way of healing. So I kept sort of interacting with objects instead of healing. And that's not good. Uh, let's see. I am going to... Oh, I've moved one down. Yeah, this one we need actually to update it even. What? Oh, right, there's a little bit over on the side. Our illustrious champion returns. Yeah. probably it. And Kashmir, thank you for the 35 months. There. Oh. That's a lot of things that we don't have available here. Um... Yeah, I cleaned out a lot of stuff in my inventory. There. Anything else, please? Oh, we need to request more. And what else? This and this. This. All right, so here that needs to go and be replaced. I'm gonna actually remove or fix a lot, fix this blueprint here. Oh, this uh, that one is. Let's see if there's something here that we're requesting that we shouldn't be. Wasn't there one of these that was broken? Yeah. Uh, that was broken. This is not going to come in, but instead I'm going to get the better ones here. What else do we not want inbound? We don't want that inbound. We want the good ones inbound. It's 100. Good. Uh, do we want these? No. Okay, we've com apparently completely transitioned to this. Uh, I don't want this inbound actually. And that will also affect Yeah. And the same for uh, the one we did before with the inserters, so that has to be fixed as well. I need to take a break. Yeah, and the inserters as well. Yeah, this one. No, 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 no. And that goes here, and you there. Anything else that's being brought in that shouldn't be brought in in those quantities that they are? is fine actually I think that it would be nice if I brought in missile turrets no yeah maybe Our illustrious champion returns. let's bring Welcome missile turrets in because they will be used 100 for each of these so why not just replenish them and skank kid thank you uh, this part here, oh, this one was also missing on the outbound. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as it is now, and then we'll take a blueprint. Oh, uh, there you go. Take a blueprint of this afterwards. 
That I don't get, but okay. 93. There. All right, be back in two minutes. See you in a bit and thank you for joining. And welcome back. Let's um, thank you to uh, Hilathon for the 35 months of Prime. And then uh, the question new today. Yeah, something started tonight. Well, that was that's when the whole thing is fully operational and really pushing it. Then it does scratch. But I have subsequently gotten a few extra upgrades on. Not that one. I think I got an extra electric, uh, an extra one of these upgrades and got some more durability. So I, I'm kind of, it's kind of stopped breaking. So, and then I, I just destroy them once in a while. But I think 30 is too much. Uh, 30 uh, bases attacking at once is too much for this. It's, it's more than I need for sure. What is this one at? What's the price here? 76. Okay, that is uh, expensive. Let's get some other things that uh, are less expensive that we really want as well. What What else do we really want? Well, that's dirt cheap. Not that really very yet. That's cheap. Should we get the this one just because someone asked for it? Construction page? Sure. Make a fuel power. Don't need fuel power. We can get more drones. Like That's always nice. That one's also completely useless. And it does actually give us a little bit more power, uh, more damage. Which is not useless. So, I will... Oh, uh, Blueprint. He's been here just casually winning the live desktop competition we didn't even know we were having. What? Casually winning the live desktop competition we didn't... What? I don't, I don't get that. But... What do you mean? How you make the ships of it? I just leave them activated. Uh, this one is... Uh, what are we going to go on? Hub. Uh, let's call it Polar Hub. Uh, complete. Nah, let's call it complete. Uh, dark Fog. Um, items. What would they call it? Machines? That seems weird, right? They're not machines or... Let's call them materials. And then, if I recall correctly, it's like this. We'll get first that signal, and then... I have no idea. Uh, let's put a building like this, and then get one of these just to signify that that's the stuff that it does. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Portal hop complete. Yeah, okay, and that's the... Okay, yeah. I think that's correct. Good, that's the one. Number of drones is unlimited. What? And your blueprint is... Two buildings per drone. How many is too many? What? Divided by two built per drone. How many is too many? I don't know. I just, when I build stuff, I want it to get built. And I want them to fly faster than me. So that's kind of enough. All the ships eventually end in one corner. Like the dude. <laughs> in one corner of a round planet. Okay, so... If you go here and go to space one, if you keep them enabled, if I do that, then they will just fly back to me because there's not, no enemies. But if I force deploy them, I press nine to deploy all of them at once, then uh, they will just circle the planet and protect me. And it just looks good. Oh, I have none of it. Huh, funny. Oh, I also need to get rid of this spot here. You. It would be so nice. Such a small convenience factor. If I do this, it should default to that I have it to what I have in hand. Oh, get get rid of it. Um, here, that's gonna come in. That will be taken out, and. There we go. Yeah. So we want the drones to be faster so that I can run right here and then they will be building both. Ooh, look at that. Oh, it's stone veins. I thought it, the, the pink color made it look like grading crystals, but nope, alas, no grading crystal, just pink color. Why are grading crystals not being picked up? I thought they were in shortage. Uh, because they are not uh, 2000 yet. So they only come in when there's a full load. Uh, the other ones, I the reason I, is that that is being used for normal production or normal distribution, so I don't want it to be sending half out, uh, half vessels out, and only get the full vessels. But the other things are just being brought back to our storage facility. This one is being brought back exclusively to um, to where it's being consumed. Did that make any sense? No, it did not make any sense. But what I could do. Okay, it's the last one. Of course, it's the last one. This one. Then I could just do here. And then do... Uh, there. There we go. That disappeared. Crowd goes wild. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> I started from your blueprint and added 180 bobs so everything is built automatically on the entire planet. Pretty, quite convenient. Quite, except it isn't really. Like, then one, you have to, 180, 180, you have to build. But then suddenly your, one of the builds is here and then it doesn't get built and then you still have to run around. I, I did consider it and then I thought, you know what, then I'd have to run around and removing all of those afterwards. And that's just about as much work as this part. So, investment goods versus consumables. Yes. Any of you sold any uh, bitcoins lately? <laughs> when moving, uh, let them build the other blueprints later. Well, then they have to be in a location that is not in the way. I don't know. I, I'm not... My intuition is it's not really going to be that great of a thing, but I can also... I'm not 100%. It might be something where if I actually tried it, I would be like, fuck, why did I not do that long ago? But it is... You're saying 180. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, it's a lot of bubs you need. Not that... Not that that in itself, I, I bet you don't have your, uh, oh yeah, don't bet, but I don't, I would also imagine you don't build solar panels everywhere, but, because that's kind of silly to do that in 
in such late game builds as this. Wait too long to do that. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Built the one without. Yeah, I, I, I know I don't have the strongest case. There's also a, turn, a, a part of it that's force of habit. <laughs> For the credit. <laughs> right. We're not going to set up mining on any of these. We're just going to be building uh, the, the, the safety here. Uh, that is definitely missing something. Reading the novel Galaxius by Stephen Baxter. Nice idea about Stella and Mega Engineering, although the book isn't an easy read. Okay, never even heard of it. Uh, don't you need a grain crystal? Yes, if I have grain crystals. Is that grain crystals? Who knows? Why am I not seeing? Oh, that's titanium. It just has a nice pinkish color because of the atmosphere and all that. But this one doesn't have any. No. This doesn't have anything like that. Yeah, nice iron and copper supply, but that'll be fine. That'll be fine. And now we don't need any more of this location. So onwards to the next. Like, okay, so I don't, I don't know about this Galaxias, but something I've been thinking about, like where I feel that technology wise, we should be pretty close to it. Everything is, is about, oh, let's build a, oh, index out of range. Thank More you for the 10 gift gather. subs. Amazing. Just out of the blue, the giving 10 gift subs. Hopefully getting something started. Um, right. So like I, I just, I heard that Russia and China wants to build a nuclear power plant on the moon. Like that's the kind of thing where it's like, it's a mega project. Like what, what the hell is that going to do there? What? Catch me here. Oh, uh, good night. Have to call it for a day. Have fun. Thank you for joining. Um, and gifting. Uh, so, what I was thinking, like, couldn't you just send, like, how far are we from sort of the factorial way of, or the Dyson Sphere way of sending robots, to, or, or desync maybe even, sending robots to mine and resource and smelt and build all this stuff so that, yeah, sure, they're going to be needing something and, and probably can't just make microchips as easy as copper and iron, but in... Um, Phew. Down we go. Oh, that's kind of in the middle of everything. No, nope, it wasn't. Um, and civil seasonal. Thank you for 200 bits. And not backers, but like sending stuff that can do stuff and, and like then you can go like okay, we can get we can mine iron, we can smelt it, whatever. I don't know if we can do that, but having them self-replicate basically, so that they will be terraforming not terraforming but uh, but preparing like mining resources build digging things for example like if if you could uh, build an underground base that might be a smart way to do it right yeah the the idea was just instead of sort of everything being brought from earth then couldn't you send less and then start working on extracting resource and building stuff? Or is that too sci-fi of an idea? I don't know how how that would work. Because you could then get sort of a... Yeah. It, it's probably just game logic. Oh, 
Come on, drones. Kind of describing the like fog. Exactly. Like, I don't know. That you, there'd be so many processes, and then it would be obviously be some things that are deeply impractical to do. And um, but the idea would still be like, can't you do something? Like, instead of everything has to come from Earth. Couldn't you set up uh, mining facilities on asteroids, for example? Like, the asteroids are not going anywhere, so set up an asteroid, build it, uh, send some drones there to start mining, build some smelting facilities. Who cares about pollution? Who cares about them? Maybe heating or like uh, cooling is the biggest problem in that case. But I'm just like, it's more like, um, yeah, mining asteroids. How, how infeasible would that be? Oh, that's not good. Ah, right. Well, that's that's what you get for trying to build it too early. Why does that not... Lack of item? Are you kidding me? Hmm. Um, yes, power would be the biggest problem. Maybe. I, I don't know. It, it, I, would, I would honestly think that maybe cooling would be the biggest problem. And you could also say, like, if on on Earth, it is very important to be highly effective with our resources. But if you have, oh, oh uh, if you um, if you're on an asteroid, you don't have to be as efficient. Like solar panels that are one tenth as effective as the ones that we commercial on on Earth, because they are super advanced the, the build process. Oh, that's kind of hurting a little bit um, but just like basic stuff like maybe the ones or it, it just I'm just I'm just thinking like would there be uh, it would seem to be for me is that that would be um, sort of in a in a positive feedback loop that's the part we're looking for well where you'd have something in space that sort of gradually grows and it doesn't have to be effective and then you can gradually send better robots, more robots, uh, spare materials, that kind of thing, the stuff that you can't produce and then gradually you can build up all the stuff that you can at this location. I don't know, I, I, I think that would be that would be cool but of course it's... we, we can do that in games but uh, reality is not focused on those kind of things. Oh, we have one left. So they even sh oh. okay so that is all of this and then let's get to our favorite location and try our new blueprint is that is that what I think it is yeah it's a grading crystals yay please don't have grading crystals on the north pole yes good 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 It's actually silly that I don't make this green as well, or oh, green, <laughs> purple, because it is part of it. It is part of my hub. Oops, not that part, but this part. Yeah. Should be fine. Yeah. And then take our new blueprint and see if that works. There. Yeah. 
So far so good. And then we need to build... Oh, crap. Oh, no. Well, it doesn't build. It builds exactly opposite of how it should be. Boo. Yeah. As soon as this gets built, then these will help a lot with building. And then go here. There we go. Now that builds itself. Now that bit. Now the rest should be building itself easily. And let's see if all the stuff that's inbound is good. Uh, if we have some of this. Okay. And then we just wait for... Oh. Oh. Uh, that one. What mega project is happening today? Well, the mega project happening today is we are taking this system because this is the best system for, uh, yeah, highest luminosity, and we have six planets around it. So, this will be a 10, 10 Dyson spheres around this, and our objective is to get the highest amount of, uh, uh, of power from it. Now, the question is. I see two major problems. One, most process we have are built on auction is just available. Ah, yeah. Simple chips are made from clean rooms. Uh, of course, like chips, I don't, that's not what I'm thinking about. Like, but you could, if, if, if humans wanted the habitat, then something that went in ahead of us and mined out underground and built struts and stuff and rooms and doors and stuff like that, all that out of metal or whatever or carbon or whatever you have available silicon maybe if, if it's sand and then like that card but stuff like chips is like really advanced stuff and micro anything microprocess but like the big stuff like building a habitat wouldn't that be possible like go like, what is the what is the crust on the moon or mars made of if it's silicon couldn't that be made into glass then definitely iron, definitely, like, there's a lot of raw materials around that could be useful. That's kind of what I'm, that's how I'm, that's how I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it, like, not, uh, yeah. Uh, here, what is this? What, there was one more thing I was, feel that we we're missing. Oh, uh, I can't remember now. Oh, yeah, this one. Mm. and then this as well yeah the current tech can't even stay active on the dark side of the moon I think we have a power issue in space invasion yes that's true we need some of these antimatter So once this comes in, uh, we have, I think, what we need. And no, we don't have enough of the. Yeah, so we need to wait for these two to come in. To come in. Oh, right, right, right. Now I remember it. It's this one, of course. So when these are coming in, we'll... Oh, right. Uh, these power plants coming in. Come on. There. I'll also get another one of these. This is... Oh, right, it's really far away. We still have two problems. Sort of delivery. I th sort of, and I think wrong fuel. fuel. No, 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 no. See, the fuel is fine because that started itself. And sort of delivery, I fixed that as well. See, sort of. 
All good. That got done, that got done. This one, not done yet, but we'll get it. <sighs> Better don't hope for easy into an antimatter. You know, some radical doers will create a bomb. Yeah, well. Ah! Okay, so that's also running out. And. That is, you know, unfortunately the pre the premise of humanity is that some idiot will always uh, weaponize it. Uh, unfortunately those idiots are the people in charge of, well, our civilization. But that, that the argument of let's stop progress, I know that's not exactly the argument you're making, but it's, it's a little bit over there. Let's stop progress because it could be used for uh, evil purposes. Like, yeah, okay. Um, a little too much in the Luddite direction for me. Let's just assume it's that one. Hmm. Get obsessed with these. Subpensation from Rolls Royce. They want to launch to space the prototype of a small nuclear reactor by next year. It seems optimistic, but the idea is there. Yeah. Uh, that is definitely some mess here. I don't like these planets that are full of lava and stuff. Also interesting that it's the second planet that's a lava planet. Lava. Uh, it must be... This one? There's still talks of building factories on the moon, but they're still trying to figure out how to get the concrete up there to build the polar hub. Mm, yes, it's the yellow. I think it's the yellow science ring that's going to be the biggest issue because we don't have yellow science. Ooh, but we do. What is that? Fractal silicon? Well, in in all uh, honesty, concrete is actually one. It's probably one of the mm, things that if that you'd want to have. I don't know if it's possible. I um, should be able to make. It depends on like you need some kind of calcium thing, some silica, some water, lots and lots of water, and then the. Maybe the bigger issue is the fact that it generates a silly amount of heat, which is not a trivial matter. It is not a trivial problem. And one of these is... That one. Uh, could decide to never invent knife. Yes, well, that's a little bit of an extreme case, but yes, yes, indeed. Uh, we are definitely uh, losing out on. What the hell is this? That and that. Who built that shit? One, no. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, five. That one. Hmm. Yeah, Captain Industry Space Age. Yes, I think that Captain of Industry. Now, now this is just. Um, Maybe I haven't thought this through. It's just come kind of something I've been thinking a little bit about. Like I think Captain of Industry would be a better game if it was if it was a space game. Uh, why? <laughs> um, a lot of this stuff just like it. It's a really weird situation. Like you have this. Like the premise of the game is that oh no we're stranded on this uh, on this island with our broken ship oh no we need to get off the island but you don't you don't do that you end up building like super advanced nuclear power plants and mine the whole plant the whole uh, location out like why 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 are you not just going home as you wanted to like it like oh because it's a thriving civilization yeah but is it though. It, it just seems a little bit weird, um, but if you are stranded on a planet, then that might make more sense. I'm not, I'm not, this is not well thought out. And of course you'd have the issue of what about new populations? Um, they are, are they breeding up there? And uh, I don't know. could be if you could start being stranded on on a place you are supposed to land and then you have to build it up I don't know it's a different game of obviously but I I think there's some part of it that just seems a little bit weird in the whole oh it's just an island okay like the, the pirates are also like really weird the idea of having those, those prolific pirates in those seas it it just seems a little bit uh, there's there's a lot of heavy lifting on the suspension of disbelief in that game, like I I, I love the game, it it would just be nice if it was a little bit more coherent in terms of sort of what what is the setting what is the story what are we why what like for example something like Frostpunk, like it feels like things are connected well in in sort of in an in game logical way but I don't feel that it is very coherent in Captain of Industry <laughs> maybe it's what happens when Ixion exits the Howard Drive yeah I mean the crust is also kind of the crust is actually a good example of, of what I think would be the setting for um, for Captain of Industry I'm not saying that it's, it's a wrong or anything I'm just Thing like because the crust is there's a moon base there are lots of moon bases and then something ha happens and then they all get kind of wiped out but there's still sort of some pockets of civilization left so there's still this exploration there's still this um sort of go out and, and recruit some but on the other hand there's also this isolation and there's also ruins that you can 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 build and and tech is is available um yeah and i think it's it makes sense it it that, that's a better setting than a random island and a, and a giant ship one wrong building or any mistake and the whole session was effed up i hope the part two will be better i think you're a little bit harsh but yes i agree on that um, that assertion is is not entirely wrong and uh, now we want to find the mines of uh, Moria. Uh -huh. Actually, let's see here how much we got. We got 1.5 million grading crystals. All right, cool. Can I find that 1.5 grading crystals? Do, 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 do. Anywhere? We got that one. All right, let's just fly over and take this then. We can't figure out anything else. I would 
think that it would be pink, but um, not really finding anything. And that is Fractal Silicon. Fractal Silicon. Quest. And, you know, let's also do it for that one. And Kimberlite. We have a minuscule amount of Kimberlite, but fuck it, let's do it. There. No, that's titanium. There. That's also titanium. <laughs> uh, why am I... It's impossible. It's impossible for me to find it. Oh, right, I know why. I disabled this. Ha! That makes it easier. That's a little bit of coal. There's some kimberlite. And there's some, that's the Sraxal silicon. Still don't see any, uh, any grading crystals. Hmm. More kimberlite. 4.4 million kimberlite. Nice. More kimberlite. There we go. Okay, it's because it's it's right there, and that's all of it. So, really close to where we are now. Let's do. Not planned yet. Off you go. And then. Here's some Kimberlite. 1.7 million. Well. Can they be built close now? There's someone saying that they can. There you go. Ah, then let's. If we're gonna make two of them. Thirteen and eight. That's twenty-one, and that's the total, right? Fully scaled up. Fully scaled up. And there's more here. Twenty. Also, this one can't be done. So. How many? Eleven plus. Uh, 11 and 10. So one of them is double tapped. Hmm. How much? Uh, Kimberlite is still one Kimberlite missing. Hmm. Oh yeah, I didn't replace the signals out. You're right. You're right. So let's go. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. And I still can't find that Kimberlite. There. Okay. So it's kind of upper half ish there that one how many it is 13 and no more so the only thing would be if we wanted the coal, just because that's kind of always in demand, despite it being so low quantity, then why not? So 
there are two patches of coal here and there's no way I can find it like this. I just kept kept uh, seeing them when I floated around. Like this silicon is also standing out like a sore thumb. There we go. That one. Mm. Coco. This is unfortunate. I don't know why this is uh, not working, but I guess we'll see. Zero cold. Funny how it's cold it still says zero and not just not there. The other the ones are not there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, here, this one, no, this one, there we go. And then also add coal. Kind of a rare product. There we go. And this one has to be scaled up so they launch faster. I'm going to smash that in there. Let's get some of there. Got that taken out immediately. And let's take some of the other ones. That's it. Cool. Let me guess. Rockets aren't working because of solar sails. And solar sails aren't working because of graining crystals. Yes, presumably. That's uh you can see that they are in high demand, let's say it like that. As soon as it comes in then it, it gets shifted out. There we go. <laughs> more comes in. Well, it works. And uh, we still have many more. So that was a uh, mark taken care of. Then let's go to the next location. Oh, look at the solar panels just activated. But I do have another place to also make solar panels, I think. And that place is... Um, uh, is using solar panels without the grading crystals. Uh, yeah. This is probably not going to be the hardest one to take. And there, that one, switch to ground. Uh, that one. Hello, Gem John. Welcome. Good evening. And gifting a sub. Thank you. Come on, drones. They feel a little bit sluggish, don't they? Not so... Uh, Aggressive. There you go. Now they are aggressive. Shoot, shoot. There you are. Oh no. No. No, you damn you. Oh, this one actually has power. Oh, this is because this was uh, one of those that had a relay station. So it has power. Doesn't matter. We can still take it out. Oh, okay, that's kind of actually taking a little bit too much damage here. My poor shield disappeared. And I took real, real damage. All right, but they're out of power now. Got to run. Our uh, habit icing. Thank you. Hmm. End of raid. Damn you! You send the raid out, bastards. Yeah, they destroyed something. Grading crystals, yay!
Look at our power, it's actually mm, going down slightly. Ever so slightly, but still. And the final one. And then we fly to the North Pole. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, do we have an... Oh, we don't have enough. Oops. to bring more of this from the previous setup but as soon as we build it we'll get what we want it's just nice to build this in advance and this is go here that, build that, build that, go over here, force these to be built. And with that, everything gets built. Uh, what else? Is there anything? Oh yeah, concrete, but we're getting concrete anyway. Missed a bit in the middle. Hmm. A bit of concrete. Uh, okay, well, I still have my 15, so. Do I have 15? Thirteen. So I missed two pieces. And it is now running on low power because obviously this is only now coming in. If I do that, then it doesn't run on low power anymore. So two of these is enough to beat this base here. For now. Right, and uh, the stuff we need to inbound is... Over here, that one. And... We have enough here, we have enough... We have enough of everything, everything I think. So, basically when we see this come in, then I think we are can expect everything else to be here. Um, I could... Just drop doesn't make a difference. In new update or just playing it again? Uh, depends on how long it's been since you've been around. There was a new update in December. Um, so if that's new, then yes, if uh, if, if not, then uh, no, it's not new. There we go. There we go. And look at those beautiful grading crystals. Oh, unfortunately, they are colliding exactly with our build here. Ten. And eleven, and then Ooh, lots, many more millions here. Good. Uh, hold on, let's also just take one of these and immediately set it up to request. Oh, insufficient logistics vessels. Well, that's not a thing. There. Get it, and 
On this panel, we'll also get fractal silicon. And sure, we'll just get the coal as well. Sure. So if we meet any of those on our journey, then we'll tap them immediately. I think that's actually easier. When we don't need to tap everything, then we can just tap those special ones when we see them. Because we are having issues finding them. Right. Um, if anyone wants to help with, uh, with our Dyson Sphere, then I want a Dyson Sphere that is uh, preferably hexagonal and it is close to the optimal like what that means is the the absolute optimal dyson sphere has the absolute maximum number of um, uh, of nodes because that's just free resource but maximum number of nodes means that it's pretty much impossible to ever get it built especially because i want 10 of them uh, so whew. Um, so it's more a matter of finding that balance between having some small hexagons and then a few uh, pentagons because you have to and then uh, aside from that having um, yeah that's kind of kind of the idea 21 got all of it and you're a big guy thank you for the 57 months that your uh, weekly check-in uh, resident lurker here just doing my monthly check-in i so appreciate that that's so impressive that you are so diligent 57 months of just loyally checking in and lurking and hopefully sometimes there's also something you want to watch maybe on vods and stuff the main resource we need to harvest in this sphere system to make the sales carry rocket yes that is that's the it's the main resource that we are running out of. Don't have the miner on the green stuff. Green stuff? Did I put one on the green stuff? There. Oh, by the way. And my intention is that we will have many launchers here. So at some point, if we look through it, this is done. This is done. Uh, is it still launching? No, that's a beautiful one. They all are. This is done. This is done. Yeah. Nice. Kind of cube. Not quite done. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, is going to take a while. <laughs> Cybercraft, also not quite done. But more worrying is, where the hell are the launchers? Why is nothing launching for Guy in a Cube? Ugh, don't fall into that rabbit hole here. But this is definitely launching. Let's see how we are doing on the sphere. The sphere is almost done. And then the sails will just be taking forever. Bubba is, uh, this sphere is done. But then this one, because it's it's mainly rockets that I'm concerned about. So if we look at it from a rocket perspective, then this is it, right? This is the problem. The guy in a cube, Cybercraft should be done, right? No, not quite. But there's a uh, 100,000 left. Just 100,000. Eh, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it's the guy in a cube, this system that's our uh, bottleneck. Pretty lucky. Yep. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it is. Otherwise, I'd have to go get that as well. So it is it is pretty uh, lucky that I combined the stuff, the material that I need with the uh, with the system I need. I might actually make a smelting uh, smelting location in this part here. Yeah. Could be. Could make sense. I can't see this one being built in one. Why? 
Is it this one? And not yet planned, so we got everything planned now. Nice. And let's have a look at the inbounds here. Hmm. They are not shipping it out. That means whatever is requesting here is actually getting enough. That's interesting. So we actually now have saturated the demand for grading crystals. Half a million rockets need needed before you start another. So you need to build build doing 720 per second to be done before summer. Before how did you before summer? How did you figure that before now? Oh, you're on, only counting the streams. Yeah, it might be uh I might be having this uh, run in the background a little bit for uh, for just chugging along. Now that we are up here with the good vein utilization, where that starts being 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 useful. Mm, how much am I? I think that I have. Let's let's look at the planetary overview. Uh, rockets, rockets, rockets. Oh, some idiot forgot to write how much, how many rockets we're building. Boo. I can't remember. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, maybe not remember, but actually see it here. Nope. How is that empty? How is that empty? Huh. That's weird. It should not be empty. Rockets 20 per second. Yeah, that's a uh, that's the old build. Huh. Solar sails, that's just solar sails. Why do I not have my rocket built? Because I don't know how much the rocket is actually building now. Alright, um Yeah. Swimmer, that is and the next one, Bathak. Fast fire ice. And here there's 2.7 million and this one, that's just, everyone has grading, almost everyone has grading crystals. Uh, let's just float in space here. Not super fast, but let's see if we can do that in. Cool. I'll be back in uh, two minutes. See you guys in a bit. Thank you. 
There we go. Ah, <laughs> the Steam Deck, uh, the, the pause button was uh, stuck. So <laughs> it was just like, nope, nope, more pause. No, nope, more pause. <laughs> yeah, rockets are expensive. You're right. Uh, hold on, is that even what I want to do? I think it's actually time for us to uh, to attack a hive. Yeah. Mm, is it? No. It's... We need these. We actually call them high train runners. Just a couple of templars left. Oh, absolutely. It is... Uh, we're almost done. Then we can't get any more. So... Switch to ground. Nine. And how many do we have? We still have... Oh, we barely have any of the uh, the ranged drones left. You can see over here. Only 85 left. Oops. Oh, that's... That should be enough to take out this planet. It only has... Four hives. I love the look of the ice plants. Yeah, the, when you can look through the ice, that looks really nice. Oh, right. This one was... Uh, this was the one that actually had a relay station, so it was not out of power. So this is healthy and all. But that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll take it out. Eventually. That's an awful lot of respawning going on. All the static defenses decided to attack us. There we go. Now we go. Oh, okay, they're still shooting at me. Like a lot. And we broke it. I hear that sound. The sound of things plopping. Okay, one left. No matter which way we fly, it's opposite end of the world. Seriously? Just fly anyway. Any way you fly, it'll it'll eventually get there. And we just park on top. Vane shooter size in 25. And that's this planet. Yep. Oh, this 20. Let me actually just check how much our. I love this uh, Vane shooter size. Mining speed 350. Or loss per mining operation 21. So that's almost f five times productivity. Items from debris is 200%. Nice. I didn't know that was a thing. It's an interesting way of doing productivity. Instead of going like you get extra materials like in Factorio, they go like, oh, you consume less materials. So every mining operation has a, instead of a 100% chance of 
using a resource, then it's now only a 21% chance. It's a little, little more abstract. way I can come up with building it. There you go. And now everything will just... Oh, there's no logistics drone. What is it? Logistics? Oh, it's logistics drones. Oh. 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 Well, then let's make sure that we get those. Oops. Oh, this one's also interesting that it doesn't actually have enough. We are actually using this too fast. That one. It is to be expected that something will run out. Um, that's a that's a little concerning, isn't it? Our proliferation is running out. Why are we not getting warnings for proliferation running out? Hmm. And this is running. Everything is running out. Uh, what is we waiting for? We're waiting for this one. Just requested too many places. Production is still going. Yes, I think you're right. I was thinking the same thing because this can, this doesn't have its own fleet to send out. So it'll have to wait until the ones providing are sending out. And if those are already busy, then, well, this one's just waiting. What? Oh, six. That was because that was what was remaining. There. Got all of it. And then it's time for the next one. There. There. I also think I want some of this. And these are going out. Yeah. And I will plan scale. After this, we are definitely going and, and taking out some hives. Uh, what are we missing? Ah, okay, 32 of that. Okay. Bring it in. Are all plants the same size? Yes, they are always the same size. Anything else would be problematic at best. Except for gas giants, but you can't do blueprints on gas giants. Howdy man, weird. I don't didn't know you were a streamer. Okay, well, I am. I try to say it quite often in my videos, but I don't know if you watched. You do know that I also have a YouTube video? Or maybe you just saw some on DSP blueprints and then someone had shared it. She had my blueprints there or something. Anyway, welcome. I am streaming regularly. I used to be able to say almost every day, but now it, I'd say I'm streaming four days a week, which is also more healthy than almost every day. Auto second sauce. You should. You think? I don't know. But they are coming in. But I can't. Re I'm not going to stand still while waiting for them. So I'm just.
waiting for them to come in here. And then we'll uh, have to just fly over these one more time. And just starting my own playthrough, clearing the last planet in start system so I get more room to breathe. Yes, that's nice. Random sharing your blueprint sounds shitty, or do you not care as long as they state it's from you? Uh, first of all, there's no reason to get upset about something you can't do anything about. Like, if someone takes my blueprint and publishes somewhere else, I mean. Even if I mind, then there's not really anything I can do about it. Oh, cease and desist. But no, um, it's just the way it is. But uh, most people are like, oh, that's up it's more convenient to have them on DSP blueprints. And then they upload them there. And, and usually sort of by laziness, they uh, will not change the name. So it will have my name in them anyway. And... So ultimately, it doesn't really matter that much. It, it's nice to get that. Like, sometimes someone will find, oh shit, like this. Oh, you you are actually a streamer. I didn't know that. Cool. Well, there will also be someone who's using my movements and never, never find out that I'm actually also a content creator. That's just the way it is. Oh, and these turned green. So I thought there were actually someone going out to actually plant them. Hmm. <laughs> tied up, yep. Not tied up. I do need to try that, though. Because you need it. But let's not don't go down that one. <clears throat> mm. yeah. So, some... I, I mind... I mind... Honestly, I mind more when I come up with a concept and then someone blatantly copies it um, and but again there's nothing I can do about it it's just because there are no barriers of entry so my you see my barriers of entry is the time that I put into this and not a lot of other content creators put the amount of time that I do into these specific games most are more superficial and do a little bit of um, sort of do some blueprints and stuff and then move on or just don't do blueprints. So that's also one of the reasons why I prefer games with blueprints because then I have something that I can I can share and there's something that has a value that isn't going to be replicated by a lot of people because a lot not a lot of people can make blueprints like this and spend the time hours on designing just one blueprint and then giving it away. Um, most people would be like, no, 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 I'm just playing the game, and then when I'm done with the game, then I'll move on to some other games. Um, yeah, so... So in, in Dyson Sphere, there aren't, there aren't that many content creators. Factorio, there aren't that many content creators. Of course, there'll be a lot coming out of the woodworks when when the DLC, DLC hits, and I guarantee you when the DLC hits on day two, someone will make a Factorio space exploration masterclass of something and I'll be like, fuck you. Masterclass is, is my thing. Call it something else. But what can I do? Nothing. I can just hope that people will associate masterclasses with me and then uh, be like, oh, wasn't there this other guy? The boring guy with the weird accent. Yeah. I'm playing like four days. Your beginner blueprint helped me to teach how everything works. Awesome. I actually really appreciate the videos you make explaining how you calculate and design the blueprints. It's far more helpful for those like me who enjoy the theory. Yes. I I like those as well. It's it's kind of a mix. Sometimes um, sometimes it doesn't make sense to do that and sometimes it does make sense to do that. It, uh, I like those as well but it, sometimes it's also like okay, we want to the story that I want to tell is more about applying the blueprint than it is creating it. And sometimes it's more about, okay, how did I actually create these blueprints here? This one turned green, but it did not actually send the drone out. <laughs> the rope guy. Nah. 
I gotta do some rope content then if uh, if I if want to be the rope guy. Cool. Another one. That's the fourth planet in this sector. Uh, so, uh, is there anything we need to mine here? Uh, no. Not really. Maroon Frost. I am going to request some of these. 500 of that. And then I'm also topping up my parts here. That one and that one. So once we get... Oh, well, actually, I can go out and take those out. And we'll come back. So remind me that it is Barthek who has my uh, spare drones and spaceships. Ah, come on. Up, 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 up. All right. Where's the near... Oh, oh, oh. Where is the nearest hive? That's you. All right. That's a pretty far away. Whatever. I still need it. Not warp straight into it. Six, four, two, three, two, there. And disable, enable, deploy. All right, here we go. Uh, that's how fine. No one else explains factorial theory like you do. Thank you. Appreciate it. I thought there was TSP Max, the class series now, two from another guy. Yeah. That's also like one of those things where I'm like, really? You couldn't come up with your own thing. You'd have to uh, to use my... Uh... Of course, Masterclass is not exactly a new invention, but you could call it anything else. You could call it uh, 101 or uh, whatever. Like you could call it anything you want, but you still opted for calling it exactly the same that I was. Mm. Made five designs to rule the moment that basically took care of all the late game designs. Yep, that's true. That was actually a good one. Okay, I'm way too fast. All right, deploy, attack, attack, attack. Uh, dude, where's my, where are my ships? Where are my ships at? I'm not going to be tanking this. Uh, apparently I am. All right, so we are just whittling down. We have 600 deployed out here, 500 deployed. Oops, as long as, when I can shoot, when I can shoot rockets, then I'm a little bit close. If you could start going click, 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 click with my uh, point defense laser, I'm way too close. I'm also probably dead. How many we got? It's about a thousand now. That's a lot. Oh, yeah, I'm getting too close. Just whittling them down. 800. Gets easier. Uh, so I can utilize the theory for other designs far larger than blueprints. Oh, of course. All oh, right. Okay. So the, the, when, you, when I talk about designs and concepts, then yes, then uh, then you are not locked into my blueprints, my designs. Then you can go like, yeah, but I want it twice as big, or it's, I do something in Dyson Sphere where it's just that's just the way I do it. For example. Um, getting proliferation in with uh, with um, with drones and, for example, using PLSs instead of ILSs. Like you can make those changes that make sense for you. Oh, we're down to 200 now. That's disappearing quickly now. And gone. Well, hello, Hive. 134, and then let's attack the other ones here. Ooh. 
I want to take out as many of the ships as possible. Oops. And then start taking out the static defenses. Without flying across everything, because you don't really want every single static defense to attack us at once. Because this, it's the static defense is what's killing us, or killing our fleet, way more than anything else. Okay, so now. Take these inner ones here. That one. It's just a matter of where we see something. Come on, shoot it. And up here. That one is also high. I think we're getting most of it now. Okay, I think we're pretty safe now. Let's see. What is still shooting? There's a little bit over here. Anything else shooting? No? Let's take out the hive, the cluster, yeah. <laughs> Will they ever stop placing more bases on your planets if you do not kill the... Uh, like, is it a limitation? Yes, they only have a certain number of uh, of relay stations, so that's the maximum they can set. Because you can also see that uh, really populated uh, systems, they, they are just... Yeah. Well, in this case, if you have something with, like, five hives, and then... Um, then one planet, then you're not seeing 100 bases on that planet. You're just seeing something is still shooting at us. Uh, um, you're just seeing like 30 and then there's not much room for anything else. Oh, there's someone shooting at us. Is it over here? Who's shooting at us? Something is definitely shooting at us. I can see there. That's hitting our... Maybe that thing? No? Should be anything that comes right in that angle. No? Still something shooting at us. I don't know where it's coming from. Somewhere else? No? Well, this one is done. Some total limit, how much they send. Uh, yeah, I I think they maybe each hive have 10. Uh, 10 relay stations, maybe more for higher difficulties. But it's, yeah, you can see it if you look at the core. You can see how many relay stations it has. There we go. Uh, how healthy are we? In terms of fleet numbers. Oh, not healthy at all. So we need to go to Bathic to replenish our numbers. Did, it deploy? Did I deploy the ships? Uh, yes, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be flying. They also deploy, deploy themselves when there's some uh, enemies nearby, unless they are disabled. Uh, that one, mm, I think we'll do this so that they get another batch inbound.
Yeah, planetary shields prevent them from landing and I uh, oh something uh, <clears throat> eight six four and that was quite a flyby. There you are. Deploy and speed up so we get there in time. Oh, it takes forever. Warping warping straight in their face is also a little bit risky, so we'll just do it. Yeah, this is fine. Every second we get three closer, four closer, so. I don't use control because I don't like control click because control click is setting their uh, deploy point. And if I set the deploy point f far ahead of me, as soon as I turn, they also want to go like one kilometer ahead, but out on that side, which means they don't work. So I'd have to sort of deploy, put the deploy point ahead of me, then send them out, set it back. It's just a lot of hassle. What I need to, and, and, and it's on for that. Why would I want them to fly in and get hit by all of the... Um, all the static defenses. No thanks. I want to fly in so that I aggro them and then I pull them away. There we go. They're red. Then I pull them away because my fleets are... We're not supposed to be deploying. There we go. They're coming out here. And now they can go in because I don't want to fight them on top of those static defenses. Uh, where are my ships? Where are you? Yeah. Uh. You. Pew, 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 pew. This is a little clumsy. I don't really. I want them to come in from one side. Oh, auto save. Well, that's good. Auto save. So how many we got? 1,200? No, no, that's not all of them. Yeah, that's a nice... Now they're more of a group together. That's safer. And then whenever there's something something with low health, <clears throat> I'm targeting it because the stuff with low health is causing as much damage as the other ones, but it's just going to take a little love tap to uh, to kill it. Click, 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 click is not the greatest sound to hear when you're in space combat. PDC's deploying. Yeah, how much? 600 units. As soon as I start thinking I'm getting a grasp of the game, I see guys like you just doing stuff that I didn't even know existed in the game. Thank you. Well, that's kind of also why uh, I, I I feel the same way when I watch um, Souls games, for example. Then I go like, I got this shit. And then I see, can you dodge through, the, through that? What the hell? That makes it so much easier. That kind of thing, right? Um, so yeah, that's... Isn't that also like part of the reason why you watch, let's say, professional gamers? Because we can generally spend a lot more time in the game than uh, than the average average player. So it would be, and maybe also have a professional mindset about it of, of sort of learning the ins and outs, the mechanics of the game to a deeper level, and then can sort of maybe. Uh, make it more accessible to everyone else. Yeah, those stupid humpbacks. Uh, 
31. That's not many. But they are killing our, our ships. Cool. And now we start working on defenses. Still too fast. There. Static defense. Static defense. Static defense. Nope. Missed it. Getting way too close. Okay, I think we're almost there. Okay, so if I do this. Uh, relay station count four, seed count zero. So don't know what that seed count is. Probably when, when they send it out for other locations. Uh, let's look for laser stuff. There's a laser. <laughs> it would suck if there was collision with this. I mean, it would it would just be a feature. Okay, we got the center, it seems. Nope, they didn't. Let's take that out now. Good. All right. Who are willing to deal with us noobs? Ah. Uh, I, plus, I'm old and lonely. It's so nice to someone to hear and talk to. Well, that's nice. I mean, maybe not nice to be old and lonely, but at least one of them. We can at least one of them we can we can cure around here. But he's not cure, alleviate. With our rejuvenating waters. Did you run out of corvettes? Yes. Apparently we uh, we lost five hundred corvettes. Oops. Yeah. Do we really want corvettes anymore? Maybe maybe we just only want the destroyers. Yeah. Well, this one is dead, so. One hell of a oh shoot! I forgot to take a save at the uh, at the break. Hmm. I'll just take a random save now. How structurally sound is this one? Not particularly. Go, go, go. Use Kvets at the start while destroying spaceships and swap the destroyers afterwards because they have better range. They can destroy the big ships and tours better. Yeah. Um, I think it also changes a little bit when with the upgrades because in the beginning I was seeing that anything that they didn't attack run was just getting shot down before they approached. So I was like, okay, if they're going to be shot down, then... I I can't have corvettes be or I I want rather want corvettes to be shot down than I want um and the, um yeah there's destroyers to be shot down so I was like okay I, I'm gonna mix in some corvettes mainly for soaking up damage I don't know if that makes sense anymore I love the fact that a combination would be better than one of each or only one but I don't know if that's the case. 
exactly that's not a problem at this point exactly that's why i'm saying that it might change with um uh, with tech levels so we're going to be trying to do less transition a little bit out of the covets one and by taking some of these and just go like that and then we take out the last hive Man, look at that. Five of these are not working. Really should go back. Six of them are not working. Arrgh. Let's let's clean this out. Distance? Oh, that's a little bit too close. Uh, fly away. Well, we certainly aggroed. Let's try and send them out here towards the edge. There you go. So now they're starting to shoot at what we're aiming at. We're pulling them away from from the hive. That's a massive cluster here because we got everyone to deploy at the same time, so they came out and bunched. You can, if you come in from one side, then you can actually kill a lot of the closer ones before the ones that are further away actually deploy and get close. Here, we kind of warped into the middle, so all of them were equ equidistant. That means we now have to work with the entire batch 1000 at a time so not ideal Okay, so this is both the ones in the hive and the ones out here is only 500 left. So means there's about 350 in this clump remaining because there's about 150 in a fully fledged space back home. I'm not really feeling them getting closer. Okay, they're disappearing before I even get there. There we go. And they come back. Do they heal up a little bit? What if I do something like this? Cheeky like this. Huh. Alright, then they are fully healed now. Okay, my attack on the last planet is pretty bad. I cannot power all the missile launchers with 30 power plants. And I just cannot break through the fences. Uh, they keep throwing stuff at me. And I don't have power to fuel more of them. Mm, why do you not have enough power? Can you not get more power? Like what's the hold up in terms of power? Oh, this is interesting. The humpbacks are not even deploying yet. Huh. Now they are. 134 seems to be the number. Okay, slow down. Come on, kill the stuff I'm pointing at. We need to get rid of these humpbacks. This hurts a lot. Take some stragglers out here. So now, time to work on the static defense. Can't see any of them. I 
That looks like static defense to me. Focused. Whoops. That's definitely a little bit too close. Fuck it, let's take this one out. Focus on that. Focus all firepower on that shield generator. Why is the shield generator outside of the shield? I don't never got that. Never understood that. But it seems like a little bit of a design flaw. Here's the shield generator. Let's put it outside the shield. Huh. Really? Because I would think inside would be a better place. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so if you want, like, Peppo, in, in terms of, um, if you have on your planets ample defense, that's on you, Peppo. I was, I was doing fine. And then, uh, I don't know what happened. Did I run out or did I just, was I just careless? Well, if you have ample defense on your other planets, then just go to the new planet you want to take over, kill all the um, uh, the relay stations, wait a couple of minutes, and then their static defense lasers will not work, and they will not. But you will get an attack from uh, from from the hive in orbit, so you have to be able to defend against it on your home planets. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I would. It's obviously everyone else's fault. I've I've been a manager for so long that it's it's never my fault. It's always someone else's fault, right? That's that's just instinctively. <laughs> Shoot the messenger. Best way to stop bad news from coming. I love it when you, in a corporate context, say stuff like that and just in all seriousness and just see, then there'll be some, they'll be like, you're kidding me. And they'll be like, okay, like, don't dare oppose it. Or, or there will be like, yes, that is sound strategy. That will show you who's the boss. Like, okay, you're a fucking idiot. If you j jump onto the, it's, shoot the messenger to stop bad news. Cool, if that's your... <laughs> uh, I was uh, a young fledgling manager back when uh, the biography of Steve Jobs came about. And uh, that had a monumental influence on uh, on manager styles. Uh, let me just go over here and kill something. Uh, there, there, okay. So I'm looking for something that, there, that thing. Where is it? Where am I? Yeah. Kill it. There we go. There we go. And that's now took out the entirely entirety of this one. So, uh, two more planets. Uh, yeah. Okay. So when that came out, that um, that biography, it just there were so many managers, upper echelon managers, uh, like directors and up VPs, that kind of thing, who were look reading it and go like, "Oh, Steve Jobs was brilliant." Steep Jobs was an asshole. Okay, okay. So if I'm an asshole, 
I must be as brilliant as as uh, Steve Jobs. All right, I get it. I can be an asshole. And they went all in on assholery um, and thinking that, you know, it worked for Steve Jobs. That must have been his secret, secret sauce. All right, well, it wasn't. He was brilliant and an asshole. That doesn't mean that one leads to the other. I mean, maybe he was... He, he was tolerated as being an asshole because he was brilliant and it was his company. But you can't be an asshole and not be brilliant because then people just... Well, you know, just be an asshole. You won't be a brilliant asshole. Yeah. The arrogance has to be proportional to your genius. The bigger the genius you are, the more it's uh, tolerated that you're not a good person. <laughs> but that was like... And people were like, oh, man, they were quoting it and they were, ah, oh, they were like, oh my god, I, oh, now I, oh, it's all coming back to me. Oh, the trauma. Make a dent in the universe. Fuck off. We're running trucks here. We're not making any dents in the universe. Oh, fucking hell. That's just, I, that's my, just triggered my own PTSD from my, my manager days. Make a dent in the universe. Oh. There were other things, but I just remember that one. <laughs> Live, laugh, work. <laughs> work, work, work. Just, <laughs> if you want to have a quote like that, then quote the orc peons. Work, work. <laughs> Any black journalists? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would just be like, not like black journalists because that was too much of a ripoff. But it was like, huh, oh, business casual. Like, okay, let's see. Maybe we don't need to wear a shirt here. But it wouldn't, it would be like strained. It would be like definitely asking the wife before going to work if they could pull it off. It was that, that level of, it was casual, but it was still safe. Shit, man. Oh. Oh. It was like it was interesting when you were just trying to say bullshit and and just see if anyone caught onto it because it was like too many things like let's run it up the flagpole and like throw it at the wall and see what sticks. I was like too much of that shit, right? Um, but if you could just come up with your own proverbs and just make it just say it forcefully and if there was a rhyme or something like that. Then, then it would be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that that sounds weird. like stuff that I took with me. From my mantra from when I was a student was: the sooner you fall behind, the more time you have to catch up. That sounds like it makes sense, right? But it's fucking bad advice. But if you say that in a board meeting, we're like, we have three weeks into this project, we're already behind schedule. Well, if I may say, the faster you fall behind. The more time you have to catch up. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I got away with that. <laughs> Just gotta say it like it's it's Sun Tzu, the art of war. Like, oh, or Machiavelli, or some some other ancient asshole. Then uh, then you can get away with it. It is a. Uh, Yep. <clears throat> All good. Luckily, that's not my... Who is a satirist? Really? I don't know. You could be... One does not rule out the other. <laughs> but I, I think that it would be interesting to read Machiavelli, the prince, um... To see if it's 
all cracked up or what it's cracked up to be. But it was just like an example of something that's quoted often by people who've not read the actual works. The best are you fall behind what? You fall behind the more time it takes to catch up. Yeah. It's not that long, yeah. I can imagine that. Um, let's see, let's see. So, we are happy on a planet? Do we have what we... Oh, let's see if... Let's see if we're getting a full complement. Not a full complement of, uh, of this. That is annoying. Because we need 870. And the fact that they send it out without having a full setup is... Annoying, but it guess it works. And this one is good. And yeah. we'll wait for this one to come in, but uh, won't solve it all. Um, I guess we can just get this one down to 200 and then once it comes in, I'll take it and then the next 200 will come in as well. Uh, what does this planet have? This has Kimberlite and Grading Crystals. Okay, so let's get that ready. Kimberlite and Grading Crystals. That one, that one. A little bit of coal. Let's just take the coal as well. Oh, by the way, yeah, this is coming in again, so no problem there. Did we get it? Yes, we did. Cool. Um, but if you read about my video, you'll learn that he was a Democrat all his life and the noble he supposedly wrote in principle. Uh, for previously tortured and exiled him. So it's pretty hard to believe that he were, was giving him ruling tips. Ah. Yeah. That's also the... That's the irony of something when something is, is portrayed as bad advice and then it becomes uh, sound advice. Like, for example, the waterfall model. It was never never intended to be a way to run a project. It was It was <laughs> intended as a... This is not how you can should run a project. And then it becomes like, let's do a waterfall project. It's like, ah, for fuck's sake. Did you not read the warning label? Or are you deliberately obtuse? Uh, at what point would you advise to start centralized production rather than on-site? Mm, I don't think... On-site smelting is the right solution, generally. Um, or, well, then the question is fair enough, because then when, when do you change? I think... I think that the correct thing, which isn't what I did, by the way, but the correct thing would be when you start having multiple systems. Then maybe even your second system with a lava planet, then maybe that's a good place to build to to say well now is the time for us to have uh, a dedicated smelting planet and then maybe get a second one not sure that's just how i feel i ah, got in here i did it way too late you want to have a really high production of Belts, inserters, and smelters. They don't have to be the bestest smelters. Oh, here's a problem. Yeah. Saint Michael is almost only remembered for that one book. And really, if you read it, yes, it is advice for how to keep control of the populace, but it also 
advice on how to make the populace hate you. Oh yeah. Don't, don't change anything but add two meetings per week and also slap a scrum label on it. Yes. The meetings will to continue until productivity increases. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I've, been, I've sat in so many meetings discussing how to increase productivity and when... <clears throat> when I wanted to get fired, when I had my, uh, my insurance uh, for unemployment insurance uh, was activated, then at some point I was like, well, maybe because we're sitting here, six managers, project managers, program managers, directors, discussing things, and we are all, and, and there are, there's one guy. I've sat in meetings where there are six people discussing the priority of one guy. And the obvious answer is, fewer managers, more people actually doing shit, instead of just, oh, it's a problem with this guy. He has too much work. Let's add more management on top of it to manage his time. Let's have a change manager and a release manager and a program, uh, project manager and a program manager and a line manager. And uh, let's also put in a scrum manager just for the hell of it. Let's put a pro uh, product manager in as well. Like maybe, maybe just get five guys doing stuff and then a few less managers. You know, radical thoughts here. Get in here. Cool. Uh, short break, and then we'll be back for the last hour. Be back in two minutes. Right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Okay, and we go up here and yell at this one again. Maybe that has helped. Urgh, damn it, damn it. Why, something like solar panels? How can solar panels be running out? Damn. Hmm. Well, that means, uh, that means we can't really get the last planet. Oh, uh, so we'll have to do something else in the meantime. Um, we can't have, we can't kill any more hives because there are no more hives. Uh, we can set up some smelting and then we can go figure out why this is not working. That would be a wise thing to do. <laughs> I 
I work on planes you have probably been on. We spent hundreds of hours to detail how one person will spend 15 minutes five years from now. Yep. And yet no one was scheduling up to, uh, to put bolts in the doors. Those kind of planes. Uh, is that Kimberlite? Nope. Is that Kimberlite? Yeah, that's Kimberlite. <laughs> Those kind of planes. Mm. Those kind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, um, in the company I work with to sort of start horror stories, there was always like when the senior management wanted more projects, more project throughput. How do you get more project throughput in an organization that is already strained to the absolute maximum? You just get some external project managers, then you can start up more projects. <sighs> like... No! Don't do that! There we go, we got three new external project managers and they don't give a shit about people, they're just here to deliver. So they are the worst of the worst. I mean, it can be good to not be sort of entangled in office politics as an external project manager. But on the other hand, you also don't really care about straining resources, right? Uh, why? One of these did not actually get... Ah, that one. Oops. Well, that's a thing. This is 17. 17 now. That is a lot. 11,000 per minute. And now everything is tapped. We got cold, good, fire ice, good. Um, that's all taken care of. And I'm going to look at this one one more time. Ah, it's 200 inbound. Sweet. Nice. The workers, we have to have a meeting about what the problem might be. Yes. And also resource allocations should also be taken into considerations. And then make a project initiation document. That's also one of my, my favorite horror stories. Like we started having formalized projects and all that stuff. It was all good. And um, there were some good things. But then we had to make like a project initiation document with like risks and resources and budgets and all that stuff so that the executive could sign off like read a waterfall but you know it's prince too and it makes sense so you get a sense of of how big of a budget allocation you need for this particular product all good but it went a little bit overboard with each product delivered as in like management product like the tests and the education like they also had to be specified in the success criteria and the quality criteria and the quality review process and all that stuff and you had like a huge appendix of all sorts of crap that no one read and i was like seriously no one reads it and I, my the, the director of the project management office was like no it's very important and you will we always read it and we review it and yada 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 and then i was like fuck it i'll just write the quality criteria being if you read this, I will buy cake. And I never bought cake because no one fucking read that anywhere. That's that's just that, right? No one read these things. It was just like, hmm, this is a good paper. Where's the executive summary? Oh, okay, there's an executive. They only read the executive summary and the budget. The rest of it was irrelevant. The cake was a lie. Maybe it was a lie, but then call it out as a lie. Yeah, Corona and work from home was godsend. You can just turn off the camera and do actual work while other people are talking about what should perhaps theoretically be done. Yes, or the whole part about everyone in the team explaining what they're doing and uh, for the manager's sake. So there's 20 people sitting there waiting for one person to explain what they're doing and 19 people supposed to be listening. Yeah, get some work done in the meantime. Yeah. To have inclusion training to ensure that the tiger team you're going to have a meeting will be set up for diverse oh right i i luckily exited um 
exited the uh, the corporate world before that became a thing. But luckily, as in, that's a whole nother can of worms to uh, to go into. Said so that I did luckily did not have to. But I also talked to my boss, um, and I was like, "Well, I, I can never be a, I can never be a VP in this company." And he was like, "Why not? If you, you have to have ambitions, I'm like, no, I can't. I just don't have the qualifications." Like, well, that's it, maybe if you work on these things, and then yeah, like, no, no, I don't have the qualifications. I have some of them. I'm white. I'm male, but I'm not six foot three, and because that is. All the VPs were white, male, and six foot three. And that was like, most of them were also bald. And they, they were like, okay. You see like these group photos and they were like, hmm, this is, why do they all look the same? Well, I mean, you can, you could be a, you could be a VP at that company. It's a big fucking company. There we go. But it was, it, it was of course like you see the managing director and the CFO and they were like this. And then they sort of promoted people who looked and talked and acted like them. And go like, this is a good manager. Yes, because he's a fucking clone of you. So not a big surprise that you, uh, you, you think that this guy is good. So Danish, yes, absolutely. It was just a whole cloning team, and there was there was one woman, but she got fired because of just backstabbing. And she was by far the most sympathetic leader, and yeah, but you know, all sacrificed on the uh, the altar of corporate politics. All right, I forgot to ask you, why is it running out? Quantum quantum chips. No, not quantum chips. No? Why not? I mean, then what? Processors! How utterly irrelevant! An expert is someone who agrees with you. Yes. <laughs> processors. Huh. Is that because we have a lack of production of processors? Or is it because we are lacking ingredients for it? All right, well, um, that is just spammable. So let's see if we can just get some more of those. Everything looks good here. It's just not really building enough, so. Also, why the hell is this? Oh. Ah, <sighs> one of these must, this is the old design. It's an older code, but it checks out. Or does it? One of these must have concrete. Yes, there. And these are the old assemblers. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, that would actually just double it. And the good factorial adage, ad ad adage, ad 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 adage, adage, I think it is, is if in doubt, yeah. There, you go, that one. Yay! I can't imagine that belts will be incapable of running up, run, uh, keeping up here. Another adult late night topic. Do you ever travel for workshop events to other countries? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, and the simple reason is there is no need for it. Oh, this one was... Ah, huh, this one uh, was actually the uh, an older one. It wasn't even upgraded once. Um, I don't need to. I have all my weekends fully booked uh, with stuff. So I don't need to to go abroad for uh, for awesome workshops but i also think that a big part of going to workshops for me is to meet people and i'd like to be able to when i meet someone actually meet them again actually see them again and if i go to holland netherlands for um, 
for a workshop, then I'm not going to be able to see the people there again. So it loses half of the value by going to an, a workshop in a different country because then it'll be only for the workshop. But what if you find someone you connect really well with? Then it's like, oh yeah, when are you coming to Denmark? Never. Okay, when are you coming back here? Uh, never. All right, well, good meeting you. I just don't need to set myself up like that. Um, so, so no, I don't uh, don't need it, and I have pretty damn full weekends anyway. So, okay, sweep, sweep, sweep. Let's have a look at the production here. Uh, local production on this planet. There, ah, it just doubled. And. Look at the consumption rate. Like, why? The production rate is so much higher than the consumption. Why the hell is there there's still a problem on... I guess that's because it's ferried up here as well. And one of these is exporting like this. So a lot of it goes off planet, I suppose. Hmm. Also, uh, Samogot, in, in terms of something we've, we've talked about... Oh. Copper is not really chemo. Something we also talked about uh, previously was um, like how important it is to know if um, if a workshop is good. Like yeah, I wouldn't know if I went to a workshop in another country if it was a good workshop or not. Like I wouldn't know how to assess that before I got there. And then the travel expenses and all that stuff on top, it just makes it really expensive. Expensive gamble. So, no. Oh, okay, oh, I did get that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Mm, actually, maybe this one actually has some solar panels stuck somewhere. Could be. No, no solar panels for us to steal. I think this should be, it should solve that, yep. A core destroyed. Let's find that. This is such a good idea. Like, it seems so trivial in the beginning, but damn, it's so impactful. This is really impactful in terms of power. And let's take a look at Gynecube to see if Gynecube's still not launching anything. There's something here, but not really. We're not launching any anything here. What was the other one? Cybercraft. This one's launching. Okay, we we have to go to Gynacube and figure out why that is the case. close by thank you patrons yay and we got I think we can get one more planet or one more star system and then that's it for this series actually because we are running out of uh, hype trains and we're running out of uh, uh, of patrons on uh, the highest ranks so uh, which one is it is it our oh, infinite shadow there I bet it, I just arrived there and then start shooting. They're like, what? The, the, then what was the problem? It might just be like, uh, it's, it, it wants to get in there, but it's not getting anything, right? Yeah, it is requesting, but... Hmm. So it seems like they, they they just they'd rather want to go to Cybercraft. Mm. Look at that! It's only eighty thousand. So we put in twenty thousand rockets during the live stream here. Hmm. Not enough.
Yeah, we need bigger rocket production. Absolutely. But that's also the intention. Um, I, I have six new systems here. And I think if we make one of them a smelting system and one of them rockets, for one for smelting, one for rockets, um, one for solar panels maybe, uh, solar sails, then you can we can we can start sort of building somewhat self-contained. Of course, it's not self-contained for all of it, but yeah. Oh, this one? Oh yeah, we tapped it, but we didn't do anything more with it. Are any others being built now? No, nope, those are the those are the only two being built. Let me just see here. See, done. Look at the timing there. Perfect. Done. Ah, this one should stop shooting. Okay, let's go to Samogod. Samogod, you are uh, overzealous. Oh, let's get out of the gravity well. Flower one is done. Yes. I love this part, like everything is just tying together nicely and like the only warning is the fact that we are overfilling on one of the, uh, on one of our buffers. There, coming in hot. I should just need to land. Ooh, yoink. Uh, So we got rid of all that. That's very nice. Gets us some extra stuff here. Good. Then let's be... Uh, Magmarel might also be one that is... Uh, let's, let's fly to that one. Let's close by. Look at that, the clown vomit. <laughs> it looks nice, except for that part here. That's that looks a little bit ecstatic. <clears throat> I think it's a good idea to just check up on all of our Oh, look at that. Our science is not working. Oh, why is our science not working when the science is not complaining? Hmm. Like, our science is stuck, but nothing is complaining about it. Oh. oh, oh. All right. Uh, this system. Children. Made it back to the end How's it going? Uh, we have... Oh, hello there. Uh, where am I? Why am I... Why are my drones not here? Seriously? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we have uh, claimed the entirety of the system of the new system, and then we've. What else have we done? We have uh, set up everything there, and we are. We've improved some some stuff for our rockets, so they're now producing. Yeah. Ah! Land, damn you! Try to hit the ground. 
So weird. That one. Yeah. Let's have a look. This one has been provided. Yep. And this is also provided. Good. So that's done. Samovar and Cybercraft, we know that. Where was the there, Baba? And flying in space freaks me out. Oh, okay. There we go. Five more light years away. So at Thornfist, you can see that we are getting we're still getting attacked, but it's very modest attacks now, which is good because I, we don't really have storage for all the crap that we're bringing in. And freak, yeah. Oh yeah, this one. <laughs> the sphere is done, but we need to launch a silly, silly amount of rocket or uh, uh, solar sails still. Look at that. That is juicy. They got that. They got that. They're not flying out. Why not? Am I missing something, or is it just that there is no demand for it? Okay, well that's nice if there's no more demand. Um, but that should mean that Gyna Cube is actually launching, and it is now, good. Okay, so let's go back to, actually let's just check on this one. Oh. If I should happen to have some, Some solar sails or solar panels. Nope, no excess solar panels that we could just snatch up here. Um, yeah. So now we go a very long flight over to correlated. That doesn't get much further than this. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was called S hat. That was interesting. I saw a few solar panels. I, because we've been requesting 4,500 of them. So it's not that we don't have enough. It's just that we burn through our, stor our storage and then they're only producing at, I don't know, one every couple of seconds. And that's still, and when we need 900 for the next planet, then it takes a while to, uh, to accumulate 900. So burn through our storage and the storage isn't really that big. I don't think there's a genuine problem with running out of stuff. I think it's just, yeah, just, uh, the production speed because we've been just setting up five planets in a row. Thank you, patrons. Still 17 light years to go. Can check phone in the meantime. Yes. Good. All good. Uh, streaming for the rest of the week is unfortunately only on Sunday. I uh, have somewhere to go tomorrow, and then Friday and Saturday are date night and workshop night. So, uh, yeah. And I'd really want to make a YouTube video out of what we've done today, but we haven't really gotten to the part where it, um, where we're really ready to start. Because we'd leave, really like to. S uh, wait, when is it? Mingsley is the first one out. There. Yeah. 
get this. Um, enable. Oops. Enable. Switch to space. Enable. Switch to ground. Our illustrious champion. Ooh, PLZT. Thank you. It's been two hours since uh, since there's been a subscription. Man. Like, when I'm thinking, when I'm planning my uh, my schedule, then I'm. I'm still thinking, which is absolutely incorrect. I'm still thinking like, oh right, I'm I'm gonna be streaming uh, Dyson Sphere because like it's a it's a it's a good one in terms of sort of views and engagement. It isn't. I might as well just have played uh, played Sekiro. Of course, there's a little bit more people, but yeah. So I should just be playing whatever I want and not. Oh, that's it. That, that was only one. Thank you, Samagot. Um The good news about it is that it is less. <laughs> there's less uh, sort of pressure on me to play the popular thing because nothing's really popular these days. So I can play whatever because there's no real impact, no real difference. That's the that's the positive way. The glass half full way of looking at it. There's another way to look at it as well, but, but that's uh. Let's keep it on the on the upbeat way of saying, isn't it awesome that I can play whatever I want? And it makes no difference. And uh, there. And thank you, Nano HK. Thank you for your prime. Welcome. But don't worry, it's uh I, I this is just a hangover after an amazing December and Partially also January for Dyson Sphere. So it's a little bit of a hangover. And when something else comes out, then it'll be coming back. I mean, if I was selling Christmas trees, January, February would probably not be great months either. And that's just also kind of how I have to look at it as a content creator. Sometimes it's just... I right, got that. Was this the right one? No, nope, it was the wrong one. Then love with DSP. Yeah, me too. Me too. But when I have these urges to play something because it's just, it speaks to me at a certain point, then I should just do it. But I do like the fact that I keep this variety of Sundays, Factorio, once a week, Dyson Sphere, and then whatever else days I have, I can do other stuff. Then I get these two help built. Four hundred and twenty. That's not enough. But four twenty plus sixty four. That's uh, then I need five hundred more on top of that. And what about this one I got? And oh. That one. Do Riot Streamers have a stringer? Stringer? But smaller following? S stringer? Stronger? Do Riot Streamers have a stronger but smaller following? I don't know. Uh, no. It, it depends. <laughs> of course, it depends. So, I don't know if I would call myself a... Uh, a variety stream. I don't know if you're referring it to me or because I have a niche, but I also do other stuff outside the niche. And yeah, sure, that's not as popular, but sometimes it can be a little bit popular, at least 
like we've been seeing a little bit of success with also something like Valheim and Icarus um, and to a certain extent even a little bit of Elden Ring so you know and even Darkest Dungeon that's that oh, a little puzzle game here or there and and uh, that's the part where smaller versus stronger mm, stronger as in more likely to sub and uh, and and gift sub well I think that the main part that is the driving factor is the composition of the community like i'm not doing over the top screamy um minecraft videos or fortnite or league of legends and those ha can have huge following but very low engagement so instead of saying stronger i would say like engagement um you can have you can have streams that have five thousand viewers and they're they are completely dead. No one saying anything. No one does anything. There's no other single sub in sight. It's just people just sitting there. And those are the people who their their monetization comes from uh, sponsorships and ads because they have to because there's nothing from the community. Oh. Well, for me, it's, uh, I don't really take sponsorship. I just declined this sponsorship. I'm, there might be one in the offering, but it's unlikely. It's, or it's, it's up in the air. Um, so, so I rely primarily on subs, gifts, bits, Patreon. So. On the other hand, most of the big streamers with very active communities are just spam first with nobody is saying anything of value but saying a lot. True, that's also that's also a part. Uh, but you have a you have a much better obviously negotiating position if you have thousands of viewers than when you have hundreds of viewers. Obviously. Well that's kind of shit. I I don't have any give me more solar panels. There. I have a few in in storage here um but i don't know that let's say so sometimes when when i've when we were streaming dyson sphere right when it came out or factorial right when it came out then we see like a lot of people coming in uh, people who've been taking a break and they they come back and that means it's like everyone from the community is here which is really nice but it also is impossible for me to keep um to keep sort of a, a good dialogue going with chat because I just can't keep up. You get most money from ads, right? Uh, yeah, all the ads. I, I will divulge some uh, some here. Let's let's have a look. Let's have a look. Sixty-one dollars last month from ads. Yep, sixty-one dollars. That's pay the bills. Maybe I should get a new car soon with all my uh, my ad revenue money. And this is why, for me, it's also a matter of, of like, oh, then I could tweak and optimize and then shove ads down your throat. How do you afford the time spent streaming? Well, I don't look at it in... <laughs> it is my job, so ultimately it has to pay the bills. Uh, but I don't look at each stream as, as a sort of must carry its own weight. Because today, let, let's say there are definitely some people here who have uh, pledged a lot and for a long time on Patreon. So part of the reason why they are pledging on Patreon is also the fact that, oh, I am consistently and uh, continuously playing games that they like. Okay. Well, if I was looking at each stream individually, it would not be worth it. But sometimes over the t over 
extended periods of time. Someone's been hanging out for a long time. Maybe they just got a new job or maybe they graduated and got that job or whatever. And then they go like, you know, I have been, been just watching and maybe now I, I can actually give back in one, one way or another. That's definitely no obligation to do that, but it can be like, those are kind of the thoughts. And maybe you just hang out on a normal stream and hang out for a couple of years and then suddenly opportunity presents itself and you go, like, you know what? I've actually been enjoying this for a long time. I want to support this. And that's, that's why the individual streams don't really make sense. And there are also some people who are pledging at the higher echelons on the Patreon sub who are specifically liking it for for the off meta things. Like they're not Factorio fans or Dyson Sphere fans or something, but just like, hey, I like all the other stuff you do and just like the chats and the, uh, the rants maybe even. And then, um, yeah, so that's why, I'm, that's, that's how I'm looking at it. It's, it's an amalgamation of it. And there might be someone who's really into me playing Sekiro who will be like, that is just the trigger for it. I want to support you to play other games that you love instead of being forced to sort of follow the grind. So, yeah. Mm. I've some streams with 10, 20, 20, 30k viewers currently, but chatting in there is for all intent purposes impossible. I much prefer the family your community where you can have a discussion going and there's a good chance that you're actually reading a comment on writes in chat. Thank you. Yep. I, uh, I, I agree as well. Like on the one hand, it would be nice to have more viewers because you know, it'll just likelihood that, <clears throat> that something is, uh, It, it is more easy to make make ends meet under those conditions, but um, yeah, it it would also sort of start detracting from the essence of the chat or of the chat room. That's what I meant. That when I mentioned like those big days when everyone comes in, then it's going to be the same questions asked again and again, and it's just then there's going to be more work for the moderators uh, and then it's going to be harder for me to follow or then some random discussion pops up that is just yeah just, that's keeps going uh there we go fire okay that's just fire eyes and a little bit of coal nothing much to do here And up here. Yeah. Uh, from all the uh, Path of Exile streamers, I watch the most guy that has sub 10 people. It's much more casual and you get to talk to him instead of just watching passively. Yeah, that's... Uh, there is... I've, I've noticed sometimes like then I watch someone and then I feel a little bit bad about going into a stream that has few viewers. Like if there are six viewers, because I'm like, I, I don't actually want this person to go like, oh, it just went to seven. Let me go in and check. It's like, oh, hello, new viewer. I'm like, oh, that's a little bit too much, too much pressure. And especially if it's someone who might know me, but I'm just sitting here lurking after the stream, then that can be. That can be a little bit off-putting. Why are you taking up the Instagram on call? Because the the coal lobby has been uh, has been paying me well recently, and therefore they get their coal. I don't know. It's just I I treat coal as a rare resource because it kind of is. So like every little bit is just take it, throw it off world. Sixty one dollars. You know, I can't live off the $61, so the coal lobby has paid me a little bit more than that to uh, sort of promote the the benefits of coal power. Did you know? That, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, this one is missing some, some things here. Hmm. Let's start looking at that.
Uh, yeah, that's not working. How much VU? I don't know what that means. Exactly what I mean. I sometimes feel bad to just join him when he has like four people watching, say hello, and drop a few minutes later. I feel like compelled to still like exactly. Oh, vein utilization. Ah, 25, 26, 25, 26. Yeah, something like that. Um, so ah, okay, oh, okay. Let's. I was looking at a Dyson sphere design that I want. Where was it? There's like a super, super dense one, but I think that's uh Okay, so here, here's my conundrum. If I choose the super dense one, I get the best power output. That's good. But it'll also be completely impossible to build because I'll use, I'll need so much. So it'll, it might be something, oh crap, I need 100 hours to even build it. Oops, that's never gonna happen. Hence the project is failing. Or I might do something little less ambitious but that less ambitious means that i might be completing it and then go like mm, i should have made it bigger so that's the balance right if you want to make it let's try to see uh here's one with hexagons and This one, 386,000 for this design. Um, how do I remove the grid lines? Oh, there. I think this is a good looking one because it has a lot of hexagons and then probably some uh, some pentagons somewhere. Must, have, must be some pentagons somewhere. There we go, that one. And probably some more. But I like this. Uh, but the important part was like how many 386,400 oh and a lot of that's a lot of stuff yeah 2.8 million okay so what if I delete this do you remember three 386 we can remember that because I remember when a Intel 386 was a good processor Yeah, I know. Let's have a look at another one. That's just decided to be really dense. Let's see how many this one has. Yeah, that's that. That's one million. That's one, two, thirty. What is that? Thirty-four million? Yes, thirty-four million. Holy shit, that's big. That's a little bit ambitious, because I want ten of those. <laughs> ah, that's the problem, right? Like, if if you want to make it, do we know how much power this would be crafting? Mm. Uh, designed to have a low node count while still having a large solar panel count. I like that idea. I don't somehow I don't think you can use the power. Um, I I don't need um, I don't need to build it. It's just for uh, stroking my EP, right? It's to have like an overly ambitious project to work on. 
But this is... It's not looking that as great as the other one, right? That being super excited about our first PC with a hard disk. It was 20 meg... 20 megabyte, that's a lot. I mean, it used to be. Uh, not the one with the logo on it. Yeah, I like the hexagon better, but the hexagon be is, is not as great. There's also, of course, the option of, of making the outer layer be my logo part. Because why not? But then that would have to be edited as well. Because it's not... It's, it's too low node count. Hmm. I think I'm waiting for it to complete. Maybe? There you go. And... Hmm. Mr. Mephistopoulos has uploaded the the Nilos logo 2.0. Oh, that has a, actually has a frame around it. Nice. Huh. Let's have a look at that. I can't paste it. Why can I not paste it? I can't paste it here. I can only paste it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so this one, I will copy the selected layer, then I'll delete that layer, I'll build the new layer, then I'll paste it back in on a bigger square, there. But we still need to do some editing here. Because this is... Are we... What are we selecting? I can't... T mm. Okay, okay, here it says... One frame in one layer. Is it a... F uh, is it... I can't see what I'm, I'm selecting. One shell in one layer. One frame is that then this one? Maybe. Yeah, and the triangle ones inside. Yes, I think that's, but that'll also be. But this one has the problem of. Um, the, I'd want to know if this is using these lines or those lines. Like, I don't know that, and I don't know how to see that. I think this would generally be a good oh, good idea. But it might also just look really stupid. Yeah. Um oh these ones are not actually filled. Shell 145, 144. Hey, Mr. Mephistopheles, I would like to use this design. We're not going to do it this time, but if you want to, then uh, I would like to uh, make, make some changes to it, or like to have some changes made to it. Uh, first of all, I would like it to be a full sphere, a solid sphere. Uh, whatever you do up here is probably fine. Um, but what is also important is that these blocks are too big. And I don't know how to fix that, but we see it in... Where was it? Here. It is just never going to be filled. Like This is not even half, not even 30% here. 
uh, and it's consuming well it could be consuming more but um, but because each square is so big each node can only accept 120 at a time and that'll just take too long time with 112 in each so somehow if we can get smaller squares that would be better But to go smaller yet, it is hard to get them to look nicely and even. Ah, okay. Yeah, I did the. I, I did look at it and saw that that looked like the newest one, the one with the gold band. I look. I like it. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the the alternative would also be like making some intersections. But if I do that, then I have to delete this and then, oops. Undo, undo, not a thing. And I don't think that would look good. I think that would break up the pattern. But maybe maybe it could just be um, like the middle part. Uh, okay, well, actually, it is the worst part, but it, it could still be working. Here, Here's also, uh, this one is on the inside of that, but this one's on the outside. That looks a little bit weird. Like it doesn't look consistent. Is that because, oh, it's because this one is not centered on the middle. I may be, I'm just nitpicking here. It seems like the whole thing should be moved one square up, but whatever. Um, that's not a concern here. Um, right. Okay, so the main issue with this one is that these, these blocks are too big. They're not too big, they are just a little bit big. But if if we retain the middle one as as big blocks, which is just awkward, then the lower the outer ones, so that it becomes a whole square, should be smaller so that they get they can absorb more uh, more faster, better, whatever. Are they enter it off? Yeah. I don't know how big this uh, this issue is. Um, it, it's going to be next week until we get started on this uh, again. But if you uh, if you want to, then uh, it would be awesome to see this being centered on the equator and it being a full sphere. And then whatever can be made smaller squares should be made smaller squares. That makes sense? Getting a bit of a moderator experience with having your input analyzed live on stream. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's a. Uh, and then all of my missing requirements and uh, just thoughts about it is also, of course, missing. All the stuff that I didn't think of, think about. But I like it. I like it very much. That's why I want this to be the outer shell. The idea here is that I want to make 10 shells and I want to make them the outer one, the one that you eventually can see, to be this one. And then further in, we can do uh, other stuff, right? All the letters, uh, but it could be done making the grid square smaller brings back the color when it fills back in. Oh, okay. Uh, I I don't know. See, I don't understand how this works, but um, so I don't know how how easy difficult things are to uh, to change. Uh, so you're saying that if I made ah okay, then it fills it in. Ah, nice. Okay. So that means I could take this out and then if I did something silly like this then it would still be hey, why is this a different color I don't get I don't get any of this so now I'm selecting this but I don't have any uh, information about this like is it using this one or that one? Is it using this, this, or this? Is there a color? Like all those things, right?
Use the smaller squares for nodes. It feels yeah, but you can't do that. You 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 can't use the. They have to be at least two apart. I think that's the how it is, and depending on where it is, like yeah. So you can build here, but you can't build here. It has to be at least two apart. Anyway. Can I just drop nodes in there without connection? No. Um, if if you just drop a node, first of all, you uh, then I don't think they actually built the square. I don't know if this works like that. Yeah, I can't. No, no, it's allowed in shell. I don't know. It, this is okay. This is the least important part, because I think it can be saved by saying the middle ones will be allowed to be bigger, but then stuff like these should definitely be improved to be smaller somehow. And anything can be done from here and upwards, whatever makes sense. Um, I like the fact that it's just a bland color here, but whether you choose to do any anything like like flower things or something like that it's it's totally it's all good whatever can come up with good or bad ideas for this i can't come up with good on good ideas why is that not working that is a mystery to me overlap with what Oh right, there's a there is already one. Ah, never mind. Right, it's been a while since I've been doing this. But how can I draw through? Oh, it's because there's a line here. There you go. Is there a line here? Yes, there is a line there. Ah no, this is just me uh, mucking about. I don't care. Trying to get more less squares and more uh, yeah, yeah, more squares, yeah. Could be a good break from it. I mean, if it, there's definitely no um no requirements of you to do it, but I thought this is a, this is a really cool really cool setup and a few tweaks then it'll be the uh the, the perfect sort of outer layer here. Should make should work if you make the slices two squares wide instead of five. Yeah, and that might also be a little bit too much, but you know, it that's true. It's a little bit it's quite a lot of work to get that done. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then the other way, yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. That one goes up. That one goes up. <laughs> Copy paste. Why can I not be built here? Oh, because that one is in conflict with that. Uh, and then there's a little node in there as well. Stop spinning. Is there a node in here? Yes, there is. That's why. Definitely, this is the most compact it can be built. It doesn't have to be this compact. All right, so I wanted to just test. OK, so it still works. Still works in, in getting the color. So somehow the color is weird. Hmm. 
once you start you're hooked and you have to keep going all the way around i know i know I, i've been doing that way too much with these patterns and just like tick, 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 tick. anyway that's not going to be today um i'll be back sunday with factorial space exploration and uh i'll see you guys then um i'll try to get something out on youtube but i don't think that what we did today makes for a good youtube episode so i have to think of something thank you everyone good night take care and uh see you around stay effective <laughs>